All right, just let social media catch up. Just let the social media catch up and then that will be Oh, looks like a few have come on now. Evening all. Lee Ashby here, Motocross and Speedway Memories. Hope you're all good. Um yeah. Got a cool uh, live interview tonight. Got a cool live interview again tomorrow night. 7 p.m. obviously tonight was uh, Rorich Line. Tomorrow night we've got Bert Harkins, the Scottish. Uh, speedway legend so that should be cool as well you can see it going across the bottom of the screen here big thanks to the man mr chambers of chambers racing you can see the logo up here he supports me and uh sorted me out with uh, a van as well which i'm super grateful for yo mr rob smith how's it going yes busy boy <laughs> hello mr shells not bad how's you I can see uh, Craig asking him about cricket as a batsman. He was crap until his big brother taught him how to play on the back foot. <laughs> Straight out for a duck, wasn't he? I bet. I knew Rory has great. Okay, so I'll ask those, uh, Mao and Craig, when he comes on. Right, so the first thing we need to do, so that's exactly what I need to tell you all about. So I'll go on here now and do this before we get the man on. So basically, all you people there, so, Anne, hopefully you're listening to this as well. Hiya, Anne, I hope you're good. So, basically, what you need to do, you need to come out of this video, and then on the post of this video, click on the post, and you'll see a little blue link. And uh, click on that, and then it'll give your Facebook uh, permission. I can't even see myself live on my, on my group. Why is that? Hmm. Where the hell's my video gone? Weird. Okay. Let me try my one. <laughs> Has it got it on there as well? No. Nope. Let's go on the group. Let's try that one. Oh, Jesus. It's all playing games already. Right. No, nope, it's not on that one either. Oh, I wonder where that is then. Hmm. Interesting. Have you lost some pounds, Lee, looking trim, son? Oh, thank you, mate. I actually have. I've lost uh, four kilos in a week. Hello, James. Come on, Mr. Kennett. <laughs> Evening, Keith. How's you? So everyone that's on uh, you, uh, sorry, YouTube, I won't need to get you to s sign up your name. Hi, Lee. Looking forward to this one with the Ruble. Yes, Martin. I hope you're good. Hurry up as Corey will be on soon. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. Man with the van. Check him out in Swindon. Top uh, charter man as well with his supersonic boat. <laughs> if you're ever down that way, come on down, hook him up. Evening, uh, Mick. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Noticed that I lost a few pounds. Lost uh, four or five kilos in a week, so that's just not eating crisps. <laughs> Ridiculous, eh? I think I normally it normally comes away from my face, and it's just literally I just got a firm, solid belly. So there's no weight on anything else. It just normally comes off my face a bit and then uh and that's without a shave so hopefully it is already coming through <laughs> richard gutted Lee, as i've got to go out now all the best on youtube see you later i'm not sure who that is but whoever that is hopefully they'll uh you basically just need to click on the link in the post uh anyone that's on facebook and then uh it gives you a permission on the privacy so i can see who i'm talking to <laughs> <laughs> No, just not eating crisps, Rob. <laughs> crisps and chocolate is out at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why I can't uh, get on there. And I can't see for some reason. I can't even see uh, my my video on the group for some reason. I don't know why that is. Where is it gone? Is anyone in my group on the live? <laughs> uh, hmm. Maybe they are. Why is it not working? I don't know. So what's that in? Ah, there it is. 
Right, okay. Right, so I'm just putting it now in the comments. So hopefully it's gonna come up on here. <laughs> Don't mean pounds me. No, I actually mean uh, kilos because our uh, our weigher is in kilos. So I was 125 kilos and now I'm 121, 120, I think I'm into now. He will be on in about 10 minutes, uh, no, five minutes. I asked him to click on at quarter past so I can try and get everyone sorted out on Facebook before he comes on. So I can see what you're all saying. Um, I have put that in the group so hopefully people will start seeing so there look i've just put it in there click on this folks so you can see i'll just show you there look so a lot of the it says we have to live see the blue thing there look i'm going live before leaving a comment please grant Streamyard permission to see your name so you basically click on that link so you come out of here click on that blue link and then i'll be able to see your name throughout like Another legend here, Mr. Sean Courtney. Hi, Sean. So you can get to see your name like that, so I can quote you. Yeah, so pretty much live 7.15 UK time, Andy. <laughs> so I've got uh, competitions going. You can see the Ryan Villa Poto, this side, look, the American uh, Supercross and MX legends, 10 uh, AMA titles. I've got a competition. I've already got 10 numbers. I've already gone out of the 60. I've just started it. Uh, so you can message me to get involved in that. And then I've got a load of Speedway ones coming up as well for Chris Pusey's jacket. That's obviously an England jacket that they wore in a tour because it's got a New Zealand and Aussie badge on it. I've got a, a golden hammer from uh, obviously the Cradley thing. I've got Yano Pedersen signed framed photo from his world championship. I've got a Speedway program board that someone uh, made of uh, my uncle Martin Ashby signed by him, Phil Crump, Mike Broadbank and Barry Briggs. I've got the pictures of uh, Barry Briggs signing that at the recent Speedway reunion for Swindon. And I've got a signed Ivan Major book and a signed Barry Briggs book as well, which I'll probably show you guys at the end of this video. But I'm doing a bit of lean in, but uh, 1985. I think they give all those to the riders. There's the signed from photo. I uh, messaged. Uh, so it was a Philip Lutter who originally had it, but it's pretty cool to have actual signed one of his thing. And I even checked with Yano if it was his. And he said yes. Uh, the signed books. Got a signed Barry Briggs book. It's all full of goodies in there. All sorts of uh, really cool pictures. And it's absolutely rammed of stuff. I must uh, check that before someone wins it. And there's... Uh, There you go. That's been signed by Barry Briggs himself. So that'll be a cool little cheeky prize there. There'll be cheap tickets for these as well. Uh, then I've got the Ivan Major book. And uh, that's signed as well. So that's really cool. So Mr. Major signed that. There's loads of cool stuff in there as well. All the uh, stats in the back. My uncle and my dad's in there and all the riders. And there's literally loads and loads and loads of pictures and everything in there which is always good that's the program board that someone uh, made and painted look of my uncle martin and uh he signed it at the top look and then you got broadly signed it here mike broadbank phil crump signed it there and then barry briggs signed it here and i've got the pictures of him signing this at the speed Maker union and i'll just show you the chris pusey jacket oh there we go. So it's Chris Pusey England jacket. I've actually got a couple of pictures with him in this as well. It's like a, you can actually hear it. It's like a waterproof jacket. But I'll show you the badges. I don't know if you can see that like that, but uh, they've got the New Zealand and Australia badge look. So I think they wore them uh, when they went on tour. A lot of legends went on tour to Australia and New Zealand with the uh, Team England, Team GB, whatever you want to call it. I think it was called England then, wasn't it? Hello, Mr. Kennett. Oh, he's on. Woo! The legend, the man. I'm trailing in his wake on the selfie thing. <laughs> but I do love a selfie. <laughs> do I put me out on backwards? Don't look right on me out on forwards, does it? 
Uh, have I still got your glass? What glass is that, Mr. Brown? Was that one of the Fox Hill ones you asked for me for? I've actually got some of each, so. Yes. If anyone's got any Panthers uh, memorabilia they want me to put up behind me, let me know. Someone give me that uh, Swindon Pebbly Beach polar shirtlet. So that was cool. It was Brian Carter's son as well that brought that over. He used to do the spares for Matt Pross, Swindon Robbins as well. Legend. <laughs> Can't wait to see Barney again. Yeah, I've got that, James. I can sort that out. Maybe I can meet you at some speedway or something. Um, so yeah, I've got all these um, pictures that Steve uh, Irvin. I always got, I got to ask him if it's pronounced Irvine, Irvin. I think he was at the speedway shows. Does anyone see Steve there? Couldn't go, unfortunately. I was away, but uh, he's done my dad there. Look, that's the original drawing. Got Eric Gunderson behind it. He's uh, sent me the Bar um, Barry Briggs, Gary Havelock. Michael Lee, who I spoke to the other day, trying to get him on for a life. And I've got a Bruce Pennell one in the frame over there. And I've got a Bruce Pennell one as well. So that's Mr. Steve Irvine. Showing you all the room here. Lee Adams' front cover. Lee Adams' last... Uh, Last boot he used at the Abbey for his uh, testimonial, and he took that off and signed it. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I can see Rory's come on now, so caught me showing off the memorabilia there. <laughs> right, I can see you, Rory. Uh, you can hear me. We can't hear you until I bring you in, and I'm just going to play our little video, and then we're going to get the man in. So let's get rocking and rolling. Here we go. <laughs> was like how long is this uh, video going on mate <laughs> i'll bring him in rory how are we can you hear me all good yeah yeah not too bad mate a little bit cold but yeah we're surviving beautiful beautiful i can hear you clearly as well so we're all good to go cool. so uh busy busy um i've just uh, spotted obviously you've uh, re-signed again for barrack next season is that right yeah yeah back back with the bandits uh pretty happy with that so um, you know, it was sort of where I am in my career and obviously coming back after retiring that it's just, uh, it's nice and easy to get on well with Jamie and everyone at the club. And, um, you know, it's, it's such a smooth operation there. It, uh, they've made everything pretty easy and they've actually made my life easier for next season as well. Uh, they've done a lot to accommodate me to, to, to come back. So, which I'm really appreciative of. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. So, they've, uh, obviously, two signings been announced so far, and uh, I'm aware of, of pretty much the rest of the team, but hopefully that will be announced pretty soon. But uh, it looks good. It looks re really competitive. Did you enjoy it with them, those guys then this season? You enjoyed that part of uh, doing the doubling up and obviously with Wolves as well? Yeah, it's it's been – the last last – Two years have been pretty a whirlwind, whirlwind uh, sort of affair. Uh, mm. Moving back to Oz and moving back here, and then the, you know, sort of last minute decided to race, and then um, it's yeah, just crazy. It was so much to take in, and and uh, there was for me there was sort of no other club I wanted to go to was Wolves, and I, I was lucky enough 
and Pete and, and Chris wanted me back. Um, could have gone other, other other clubs, had other offers, but, you know, that's where I wanted to be. Um, and the championship was more, you know, where I, could, where I felt comfortable, where I'd slot in nice and easy. And um, Berwick was, you know, wouldn't you wouldn't think that would be sort of my cup of tea, but um, I've, I've had some really, really good meetings there and, when when started the negotiating with Jamie and Scott, it, it it was just like like this year, even easier. It was just just there it is. That's what we're after, and and they said, yeah, no worries. Let's let's get it on paper, and um, and so calm and and relaxed atmosphere in in the club. So um, just just happy to be back at a club that you know there's just so smooth atmosphere and relaxed. Yeah, and obviously, like you said, there's been a lot going on. Let's uh, get straight into that uh, stuff. Um, so, obviously, you went to go back to Aussie. Uh, what was the reasoning for that at the time? And then what was the reason then for the for the U-turn? Obviously, all the British fans were happy, but what what how how did it all go? How did it all go? Yeah, I I got to be honest. Like I I think I said it a few times before, like when I decided to, to make it, like decided to walk away, but. It was I was getting more enjoyment out of other out of things outside Speedway. I, I was enjoying stuff like just downtime more, mm. um, you know, spending more time with the family, wanting to go away more as well in the summer, and um, and not only that, I felt that you know at that age I thought. Am I getting too greedy? You know, with the injuries I've had and stuff like that, yeah. not not many not many riders get to have twenty years in 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 speedway. So yeah. I was just weighing everything up, and I was getting pretty tired as well. Uh, yeah. Maybe not physically, but every year was like it was getting harder. The grind in the off season was getting harder and harder. Yeah. Um, and I think a big factor was during COVID. I ended up. You know, an opportunity arose at a, at a company that way I'm working still now. Yeah. Um, and I took it with both hands and I really enjoy it, uh, challenging every day and and was getting not the same enjoyment, but, you know, I'd never had that nine to five work life. People might think, oh, you know, you're stupid. You had a great, you know, life, you know, racing all over Europe, blah, blah. But after 20 years, it it can weigh on you. It grinds, and sometimes a bit of normality is actually what you what you desire. And yeah. that's was one of the big factors. You know, um, we always talked about you know me and the missus with the family going back to Australia and building a new home and and you know camping and doing all the things you do in Australia. And and we thought that right, we're done. You know, that's it. Let's let's go and and let's give it a let's give it a crack and. We went there with all the intentions. That was it. You know, I, I sold everything. You know, there was no – I kept one bike, but the bike wasn't rideable. You know, I made sure it wasn't rideable. That why the whole point was <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want it teasing me there in the corner. That's um, so, yeah, I'd sold everything. Never was going to ride a speedway bike ever again. Um, and the playoff against – Glasgow at Paul, I, I've got to be honest, I was relieved after that meeting. I generally was. I thought, I just thought, let's get let's get on the plane. I'm, you know, I've had enough. Don't get me wrong, I, I miss the, the riding factor and stuff like that, but, you know, a lot of people don't see what goes on behind the scenes and, and, and the, the grind to, to get to the season, the start of the season, the sponsors, clubs, making sure, you know, you can run at a – financial gain and a profit because you know speedway is getting harder and harder to do it mm -hmm. so um and once we got back to oz you know we got jobs and you know bought cars and started looking at plots and house plans and everything so everything was in the right direction but it was a uh, um we got to a point in australia where i know a lot of people say the cost of living here is bad you want to try it in australia it is it is obscene the, 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 the cost of living there. Mm. Property, I would say, is the worst in history, as in trying to get on the market. Anyone trying to buy their first home in Australia, I, I do not believe that is even possible with interest rates and stuff like that right now. Wow. Um, uh, everyone has their story, you know, coming out of COVID and stuff like that, so everyone will have, mm. you know, you know, that sort of thing. But we got to a point where we – 
had a decision to make. Like we were still set up here in England, like we owned a house and, you know, we could walk back into jobs with open arms and stuff like that. And we, it was a, it wasn't like an overnight decision. We slept on it and we thought about it and we thought of all different options. And we just thought, you know what, we've given it a crack and we don't really want to stand it up, you know, when I say be stagnant for two years because that was the sort of the advice we were given by, you know, property advisors and stuff that buying houses now in Australia is a financial suicide. So we mm. thought, well, that's not where we want to be. I didn't move all the way here to do that. Mm. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we made the decision obviously to come back. We, I hadn't at this stage decided I was going to race. Mm. Um, so a few, like I think a month passed and I sort of said, uh, you know, getting things in order, we started packing things up. And then because I was pretty – pretty bummed and pretty down about you know like our dreams that we wanted to go to australia and things like that and i was pretty angry at one stage and the missus says why don't you go for a ride and i said what do you mean she says go for a ride at Mildura or you know just for a practice you know take it out on the track and i went i didn't really think about it like that and then i thought you know what bugger it i'll do it so my brother's quite you know quite heavily involved in the Mildura club there the Mildura speedway club there so we all organised a practice day there and got the bike ready, went over, spent the weekend with my brother and, and um, it was like I hadn't been off. Uh, and then we got a tap on the shoulder by the promoter at Mildura and says, uh, how much do you want to do three meetings in Mildura? I said, I'm not racing, mate, I'm not racing. He said, no, how much do you want? And um, <laughs> so we went backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Little did he know we were moving back to Australia, uh, moved back to England at that time. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought, I don't know. And then my missus sort of planted the seed and says, well, if we're moving back, why don't you see if you can race again? And I just went, I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, and then that's as the, the ball started to roll, I then made a couple of calls to England. Yeah. Um, and then the phone just went absolutely hot. Like, they just started ringing. Um and, uh, yeah, and then decided to do some meetings while I was back there, obviously to get sharp, um, obviously get race ready. And, um, yeah, so we we did all that. And then, obviously, I think we flew back into Feb and then I was straight back into work within, I think it was 10 days. So I didn't get much of a rest period. And um, at the same time, we were moving back into our house. I was having to build three bikes and, um, yeah, it was it was pretty mental the first couple of months. Okay. So is this brother Craig by any chance? My brother is Craig, yes, that's him. Don't tell me he's on here, is he? Yeah, he's already been on here. He'd actually messaged uh, me before I even come on live. Uh, so I looked here, and uh, this is what he had. He put, uh, ask him about his cricket as a batsman. Uh, he was crap until his big brother taught him how to play on the back foot. <laughs> Uh, well, it, that, that's strange, really, because he couldn't he couldn't play off the back foot either. So I don't know where he's coming from with that. But I will say this: he did teach me one one or two things, um, cricket wise. Uh, but uh, I think later on in our years, I think I got the better of him in the nets. I think I think if we asked him that, he'd, he'd have to be honest. There you go. Love your competitive nature. I knew that would come out eventually with the brothers thing. <laughs> <laughs> we know how that goes with brothers. I'm the same as well with mine. Well, it, it's, I'd never raced against him on a motorbike until I went back to Australia, just now, obviously that now. Um, and he he was on a he was on a Suzuki 250 um, four stroke, and I was on a an RM125 1973 RM125. He whole oh. shot at me, obviously. He's got a few more horses under him. And he rode – I've never seen a – how should I say – a roadblock that wide to hold me off <laughs> for four laps. Wow. So he'll – he'll. I bet he'll go to his grave with that, saying he led me for four laps around his own track anyway. <laughs> I've just seen his comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Brilliant. Love that. Love the, uh, the rivalry there. <laughs> So what what did uh, what did uh, Craig think about you uh, going back then? And uh, well, he was disappointed because I think he wanted he wanted me to you know help out with Blake, uh, obviously my nephew's son. Um, but you know my whole family obviously realised that you know 
the, the world was in such a state and where we were as a family, it was it was not impossible to try and make it happen in Oz as much as we wanted it to. Um, right. It just didn't make sense. Any other time, if we'd gone before COVID, yes, we would have been we would have been a shoe in. Um, you know, uh, just to give you an example, the, the the house prices we were looking at ranged from um, five hundred to seven hundred thousand for the same house we wanted. Pre-COVID, you were looking at nine hundred plus into the mil- million. So that, that that that's the extreme of it, um, and it's just not. It didn't make any sense. Wow. Yeah, I see what you're saying. There's the man's on tonight as well, Mr. Tim Chambers. Hi, Tim. He's uh, back to my stuff. The selfie king's here, Mr. Barney Kennett's already said evening, Rory. <laughs> evening, Baza. <better. laughs> <laughs> Right, so I've already had and seen the messages come through as well because I've got loads of questions here myself, but if the fans say it, we go with them anyway. And I've uh, just seen that uh, Simon Corbett, I think he was a big Craigley fan as well. He's put any offers on the table in the Prem for next season? Uh, as of yet, no. Um, okay. It wasn't – I'm not overly chasing because I, I, I've got to be honest, it's, you know, with, with my job at the minute um, and – you know, this year I did find it difficult doing both leagues and working and doing my bikes on my own. It it, yeah. it was difficult. Oh, sure. But in, in saying that, I have spoken to a couple of clubs where I've sort of said I'm not looking, but if the right offer was offered, I would I would obviously take it seriously. So mm. I think with the reduced teams as well, Obviously, my average is quite. I wouldn't say it's an attractive average. You know, you got to be got to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you know, there's a lot of young, hungry riders out there. Um, where I'm sort of at the other end of my career. So, um, spoke to Scotty a little bit about what he did. Like he dropped it. He just did the one league, and uh, and obviously has his commitments out outside the racing as well. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I was quite keen just to maybe prioritise the one league, but it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not ruling it out, but um, you know, we'll wait and see. I, I can see a team starting to fill up. Um, it might be just ideal not to sign straight away and maybe pick something up as the year got rolls in. So it's just something we'll just sit and sit and wait and be a bit patient. Hmm. Interesting. So it'll be uh, watch this space on that one then. Uh, so what, what's your thoughts? Obviously, we've lost uh, Peter Brewer and Wolves, and obviously I know that uh, Wolves is close to your heart. Even I know you did your year at uh, Peterborough as well, I believe. Um, pretty pretty uh, shocking. Hopefully, uh, them guys can come back at some point with different venues. But as we know with Swindon as well, it's in the same boat as well. So it's not easy, as we know, and it can soon escalate. So uh, what's your thoughts on that? Um. Yeah, well, without without getting into politics, yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's just a shame for the sport in general. You know, whether you're a Wolves fan, a Peterborough yeah. fan, a Swindon fan, a Coventry Bees yeah. fan, Stoke mm-hmm. fan. Um, Definitely. You know, like I know I know Paul is still under a bit of a cloud. You know, with what's going, you know, with the ownership down there. Um, I know they they they're good for next year, but I know there's always that, that sort of that cloud there. Um, Obviously, with Newcastle shutting down as well, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't. I, it's it's a hard one to try and describe because fans will feel like I, I I walked past so many Wolves fans on the last night, and to see so many faces, you know, glistening eyes and tears and stuff. Yeah. Um, Gets you. It, yeah, it, it, when it when you say it affects you, it it almost makes you go back to that. I I started thinking about my first meeting. That's what I, I you know, when I, was, I just started thinking about my first meeting, all the sort of um, nearlies and could haves, you know, uh, and I just feel of a club of Wolves stature and Peter, you know, with the history both clubs have got, oh, yeah. Coventry, you know, it's it's just gut wrenching to see it and. Um, you know, I'm hoping. I, I've I've spoken to some people from both clubs, some positive signs, you know, and um, some things I've heard. You know, hopefully that that these things will materialise and, and be a positive thing. Um, and uh, you never know, maybe you know, in 12 months we could see them back. Yeah, I've just seen uh, the stuff 
I think that's all come to the, an end with Coventry, and then there's going to be a decision on that as well. So we might possibly yeah. hear some from that would be good, wouldn't it, Rory? As well. Yeah, no, I, I know Jeff really well. Jeff Davis, who's been absolutely, um, I think he's just put everything into it. Absolutely, his whole life's gone into trying to get Coventry back, and uh, I really hope. You know, for the club's sake, but for his sake, the the time, effort, um, no doubt probably money as well, that that him individually that's put into that effort to try and like, keep, you know, the, the chance of Brandon returning alive, yeah. it's all, yeah. I've, got, I've got to say, it's all down to that guy. Um, and uh, I really do hope a, a positive decision comes out of it. Uh, if not, I hope Coventry Council back the club in finding new new land um mm-hmm. but then again you go down the politic route and you know um you know i'm <laughs> sure i'm sure i'm, I'm, I'm sure that the coventry council will, will have plenty of room for car parks you know they yeah, they do it at all, all they do it at all the hospitals charge everyone you know an arm and a leg and even yeah. charge the, charge the staff to to park at you know at the hospital so, so well, that's me going, that's me going on a po- political rant but enough yeah, of that. yeah. <laughs> Exactly that. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, I think we might have some good news of Swindon as well. Apparently they found a new venue, uh, but it's not going to be in Swindon, so it's going to be out of Swindon. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I'm sure we'll Sometimes that. that could be that, that could benefit benefit the club in, in the long run if it's not too close to the city and it's a little bit out on the outskirts. Like what sort of Workington's done, I guess. Workington's really yeah. – I've not been there yet, but I know where they're situated. It's – Bit rural, so you know. <laughs> then again, I think yeah. a lot of clubs were were in a rural area at one stage, and then houses just popped up from nowhere. Yeah, same with Swindon. <laughs> the houses just went. Oh, yeah. Like wow. <laughs> yeah. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, out in the out the way would be good. <laughs> yeah. Give you give you a few years for the for the houses to catch up. Uh, so it looks like uh, listening to Uncle Rory there, look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Sean Courtney. <laughs> Hi, Sean. I'm glad you come on. He's put, looking forward to Rory leading the Bandits next year. Beautiful. Thanks, Sean. So, what's, what? Uh, obviously, Sean's watching. <laughs> what's <laughs> the track like? Uh, there's a big old track. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Um, well, the the Barrack track is a, new, a unique one, really, because it's around a, a, a football pitch. Yeah. Um, the straights are really, really long. Um, and obviously everyone knows about bends three and four quite quite heavily banked. It used to be a lot more steeper. I think I, I think it used to be a lot still like the banking used to be a lot more steeper um, when I first come over. Um, they've worked they've worked a lot on the banking on turns one and two, where you can actually utilize more of the track in one and two, which I think is better for racing. Um, uh, they've, they've widened obviously the straights over the years as well. Um, I, I do believe that there are talks and maybe plans of bringing the start line back a few metres, okay. um, which I think would be a great positive uh, because Berwick's notorious for first bend bunching mm. and, you know, some big crashes happen, especially in the first corner. Um, so I think hopefully, you know, if that, if that plan materialises, um, you'll find a lot more even spread into the corners as well. Um, yeah, a lot of the elbows, uh, yeah, a lot of the elbows w- would have already been sorted before you get to that point of the apex where you got to turn and, um, point, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. So yeah, that for me, I, I, I like it as a home track. Um, I probably didn't ride Berwick as well as I did at the start of the season. I did obviously started to come on towards the end. Um, but I reckon that was a little bit down to our fixtures. Like we had such a long period there. I think I went nearly a month and a half, nearly two months without a home meeting. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah. it, it was strange. It was, I'd never, never had that with a club mm. at all, like not having a home meeting. We had loads of away meetings at one stage. Mm. Um, so, may, yeah, that could have hampered a little bit. But mm. I think, I was still at the beginning of the year. I was still trying to get back into the. I know I was only out a year, but you got to remember it, to come back into that atmosphere, that that, and have that mental approach. You still got to be turned on, you know, when you get to the tapes, and uh, it's a hard thing to do. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, as the season rolled on, got more meetings under my belt. I think you know, I came into my own 
a lot, obviously a lot better away from home. I know that, but I think, you know, towards the end there, I started to, um, you know, put in some good numbers at home. I'll be looking to obviously, you know, hit the ground running hard early on um, next year, uh, mm-hmm. looking to make a little change equipment wise as well, uh, okay. just, just for home meetings as well. So we're looking to do something just for barrack meetings. Nice. Um and uh yeah so you know like, I, I enjoy it you know so it's i tell you what if, you, if you've ridden barrack, you understand what going down the back straight and going into turn three there's no other track like it because you go in there really hot uh <laughs> because you know you've got the banking there and you, you just run up as hard as you can um and what makes it even more interesting if you're behind someone and you're going in hotter so it gets a bit tight so um yeah. no fun fun track can get a bit bumpy a bit wavy at times but i think that plays into the hands of the home team so yeah i'd have to, I'd have to come out there and watch because i do like watching i've seen it a couple of times on tv and i do like the look of it reminds me a little bit of a corner at bradford when they used to have at oddsdale with that oh, I, what i would say if you want to get to the closest of a bradford style racetrack that's the closest you're going to get i think yeah. bradford was a little bit little not as long straights but wider i do think it was wider um but yes i think that's as close as you, you'd get to a to a bradford mm, like to get up in that third and fourth turn look good looks uh, all action mm. looks good uh right we've got uh, loads of questions down here down the side just got one from chris simpson i know he's a bees man commentary bees he's put uh rory got shot on a few times by the bees as his average fit uh, changes were needed, but I always get the inclination that all the teams he's ridden for in the UK that country was the one closest to his heart. Would that be correct? As he is very much welcomed by the Waterlands too. That's a toughie. I I, mm. I got to be honest. Coventry will always be my home. Yeah. Um, I won obviously two league championships. Uh, we did well. We did the treble, um, uh, and for sure it was my, my club. It, it was it was my club. Um, the last few years there, yes, you know, more, not necessarily with the fans or, or as in the club, but with mm. certain people that were running the club at the time, you know, yeah. it left a, left a nasty taste in my mouth, if I'm honest. Um, but, you know, I, lo- I, I still love the club. I always went back there. I was always welcomed by the fans, like, you know, even guested, you know, on occasions as well. Um, loved the racetrack, always loved it. Um, and it'll always sort of be my first, as should say, proper um, premier. I know I raced for Bellevue for them two years. I mean, but I came into Coventry as a Coventry rider, not doubling up or anything like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, always I had loads and loads of fond memories of that place, um, riding with Bomber, Scott, um, even AJ back in 05, uh, you know, um, working with um, Peter Oakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sandu, you know, Pratty, what can I say about the guy? Um, yeah, he was great. He was great yeah. brought, brought me to Coventry. Um, cannot count. I lot would have lost count of the times I'd just pop in for a tea into the office. Um, he'd always have the biscuits ready. Um, and, and the best thing about Colin was when I raced there, I could have a disagreement with Colin but come – race day or come the next day it's done it's finished it was it was you know it That's wasn't good, an yeah. issue you know um and we disagreed quite a few times but it never never affected our relationship it was just you know you said that and i said this and that was that um and the best thing about colin colin made decisions that were the best for the club and i know that and i, and I can vouch for that um and uh you know he was mr coventry towards the end there for sure Yep, hopefully they come back. That would be amazing if they do. Everyone loved going to Coventry. Uh, Midlow's on. How's it going, Neil? Uh, where's Henry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, Midlow introduced me to a, to a, a cider brand uh, while I was oh, racing. Right. Before. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Henry Winston's, I believe, it's uh, quite a quite a strong cider. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my taste buds have. Uh, yeah, I do like a. The odd point of old Henry now and again. Um, I actually sent I sent Middle a photo while I was on holiday with <laughs> drinking a Henry's and he goes, yeah, that was many many, many of Henry's were drunk at Middle, especially after we won the double. Yes, that was a good times as well. So did you enjoy it while we're on? Now? I, was, I thought is he talking about a Hoover for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 
I couldn't have thought of, of, of a better club to write at the time. I mean, like, obviously how it materialised. I was supposed to be riding at Somerset. That didn't happen. Obviously, they closed down. Mm-hmm. Um, and Matt Ford is a shrewd, shrewd businessman in the Speedway terms. I think it was within oh, not even, I wouldn't say hours, minutes, the phone was ringing from Matt after I had got the phone call from from um, from Somerset and uh, the deal was done within 10 minutes. Um, I'd never, uh, how should I say, there were times that we were close to sign him f- for Paul, um, mm-hmm. very close, and uh, especially the year after I left, the year I was signed to Coventry, that was very close. Uh, I'd spent some time with Matt, you know, leading up to the end of that season. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just found that I thought, you know, when the opportunity arose, I thought, oh, I'm going to pull. It, it didn't matter. And the team, I just thought, this is the best team I've got, you know, to win something before, you know, before I pack it in. And, mm-hmm. and the thing I know about Paul, it breeds winners. Um, and the best thing about Paul is if it, if you don't become a winner, what, what I should say, you're, I'm not saying you're not, you don't come back, but you find out if you're a Paul, right, if you're a calibre of Paul. Mm. You know, you go there and win trophies. You, you're signed, when you go to Paul, you're signed there. I know every rider in every club should be like that, but it's a different mindset when you sign for Paul. It, it it's almost expected of you. You don't win. It's a, it's a disappointing season. Um some clubs will say, you know what, we were quite successful. We got to the playoffs. That's not in in Paul's uh thoughts. It's just not there. If they're not taking away silver so like this year, I tell you what, would be pretty hard um to be a Paul rider and to, you know, not, you know, finish top and, and not win anything. Um mm-hmm. Uh, after the last two seasons that they've had, um, you know, but I know Matt, he would have, as soon as that meeting was over, he probably even before that, he would have all had a plan A and a plan B for teams yeah. ready to go, to, ready to go again. And uh, don't worry, they'll, they'll be, they'll be by the point in for sure for next year. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was going to say the, they're like, they're sort of like the Man United of, uh, Speedway, well, the f- former Man United, eh, Roy? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, uh, I am, yeah, I'm a United fan, so... Um, so am I, so uh, am I. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, don't, I don't know what the score was. They were playing Galatasaray. When I walked out, it was 3-2. All right, okay, we'll, have to, we'll check that while we're resolving. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, oh, yeah, um, we'll yeah so, yeah. but, yeah, uh, yeah, big fan of Paul, as in, and the... And, it was a special kind of year, as it was me last. The fans were fantastic. Uh, I, even Matt said to me the crowds were probably bigger, you know, what they had had previously. I mean, you know, even when they're in the the premiership. Um, and uh, I think Matt and and Danny are relishing, you know, racing in the championship. I think they really enjoy it. Three three. Oh. Yeah. That's annoying. Get him out. <laughs> Ten out. Get him out. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that's annoying. <laughs> Don't know whether I should say that or not. <laughs> but you had a yeah, so you had a successful time down at Pool. Um, yeah, Midlow's on, and like you said, Midlow's uh, just the same as well. He's uh, yeah, Barney's just put three through. Uh, but Midlow's, like you said, he's a winner as well and passionate about it, and everything puts us all into it. So it's always uh, good down there, isn't it? Midlow being a former rider as well, so he's got a yeah. he's got a rider's mindset. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at reading people, and I, and I, uh, I watch people as well. And I've noticed, you know, noticed, you know, just by watching Midlow, he would approach riders at certain times. Um, mm-hmm. you know, not necessarily get up in their face after a raid. You know, he would wait. You know, there'd be a time to talk to him, and that's what. And I noticed that with Midlow. Um, mm-hmm. and as fair as anything, you know, when it comes to putting riders in eight fifteens and and stuff like that, and um, but you know, if if the wind depended on it, Midlow would make that cutthroat decision. You know, he would he would make it. Um, you know, and having worked with riders like Crumpy, Ricarts, and Adams, Laram, Havelock, you know, he, you know, Darcy, Chris, uh, Hancock, you know, he, he's he's managed the best. So, um, yeah. you know, if Midlow don't know, it's not worth knowing. No, for sure, I totally agree with that. Uh, I was going to ask this as well. Uh, 
I think I've already spoke to <laughs> Rory <laughs> pro, uh, privately on this. But yeah, Rory, did Swindon ever try and sign you? Because uh, I said to you uh, pro, uh, in the message, I said that you always flew at Swindon. I remember it all the time. Killed us with Coventry, as you know, in the few times in those finals. But uh, uh, yeah, did you ever get approached by Swindon to sign at any point during during your career? I did. I did uh, multiple times. Um, I was contacted. Uh, I think the first year was t- it was actually the year. Um, the first year was two thousand five, uh, like two thousand four, um, and they they proposed probably the best. When I say the best, I mean I mean it was. It was still to ride with Edinburgh, but double up with Swindon. Um, but because I'd already committed in Sweden and at the time Poland, that I was I was making the step, you know, because at that stage, my competition in the under twenty ones at the stage was Matty Zagar, Limbach, Freddie Lindgren, uh, Jonas Davidson, um, Majinski, Muscova. These guys were racing in Poland and Sweden. Where at that time I went to World under twenty one, and I wasn't racing in Poland. I wasn't racing in in Sweden, and. And I, I, I finished fourth in the under twenty ones that year, and and I just felt I needed to be racing against these guys in these leagues, and to do that, I'd need to, I, I'd have to drop. At that time, was the Premier League, uh, which now we call the Championship. Um, I felt I had to drop it mm. and commit to the one league in in England, and then obviously sign in Sweden, which I did, and then sign in Poland, um, and that, that was why I turned the Swindon. Um, the Swindon deal down because the, the way they were trying to structure it as well, um, they wanted that's how they wanted it. Um, that was between obviously Edinburgh and Swindon, but um, I turned that down because I just wanted to focus. And at the time, I probably pre- preferred the Coventry track a little bit more to Swindon. Okay. Um, but then obviously, I grew into the, the, the Swindon track as well. Um, okay. And yeah, and, and actually got, got quite good around there. Um, and, uh, so yeah, and I think the next time they tried was after the 2011 season, um, Terry approached me in the pits, actually, I believe it was in the pits. Um, yeah, I might have been the car park of the pits. Uh, and he he just, um, yeah, he, yeah, he said, would you be interested? And I said, and at that time, because Bellevue was, I was only I was only planning on staying a year at Bellevue that year because I wanted to go back to Coventry. Yeah. Um, like I said, Coventry was my home. Yeah. Had a lot of sponsors there, so I was like, no. And then because I was sort of, I don't know, uh, do I, don't I? And then I had that year and I just thought, and then everyone was sort of wanting me and I sort of had pretty much, I could have gone anywhere. Um, but I ended up staying at Bellevue. I, I decided to stay at Bellevue. Um, and I think they was the only two times I think um, that I know about anyway. So, okay, damn, <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely flew at Swindon. You was always a thorn in the side when you, whenever, whoever you come with to Swindon. And I remember uh, obviously the elite league finals. I think it was called then as well. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yep. You won two of them as well, which everyone knows those elite league riders championship, uh, uh, Premier League championship, whatever you want to call it at the time. But they were stronger than gp lineups as we all know they were like number ones all the way through their meetings yeah. they were always super tough weren't they well i actually raced in my first one uh when i was actually was 18 19 19 i was actually riding for um bellevue doubling up i was still riding for edinburgh and i get a phone call day before in the on in 2004 crumpy was ill and they said rory would you ride the the elite league rider championship down at pool i went you know i was young oh yeah i don't care let's go you know and that lineup i think had 10 gp riders in it i think and i top point scored that day wow and that was the that was the day sort of i got noticed you know i thought okay this lad's got a little bit about him mm. you know i beat adams here i beat sully that day biani you know like that it was a strong lineup and um yeah it, them meetings were always tough i still think they're tough now because i just think that it, when you get to that semi-final and that final it's, it's cutthroat it, it proper is cutthroat but um always loved riding the 
yeah, the, the championship. Um, lucky enough to have won two. Um, I, th- I think Chris Holder will remember the one he won at Swindon where I went for a little sleep and turns three and four, uh, trying to <laughs> trying to produce a, a dive bomb from back in 1978. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I always enjoyed going to Swindon. Didn't really take to it early on. Like my early mm. elite league career, I couldn't quite – get to turn because it was quite a sandy track um because a lot of the dog sand would would like from the rain would run onto the track and really thin thin the material so it was hard to get a good setup and um uh i just remember one day i think it was i think i was riding for coventry at the time and i got to beat lee there one night and uh I said, "That's it. I ain't changing the setup. I'm not changing anymore. You know, if that if that's good enough to beat Lee that night, yeah. but funny enough, Swindon was always the same. You could never run the same setup there twice. You couldn't do it. Um, and uh, but yeah, it was a good racetrack. It had many different lines. Well, especially off turn two, if you could get it hooked up off the curb, and uh, a lot of home riders used to get that to work as well. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you ride the new shape in the end when they brought the corner in, the first corner when they brought that in?" Yeah, yes, I think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did yeah, ride yeah. that, yeah. yeah. What did you think yeah. of the change of that? What was that like, with the changes? Because it seemed to be a bit um, more, I, don't, I can't remember. Yeah, more I, I, I think when they did change it, um, it affected the exit, mm. I think, because um, the, the, the inside then didn't work as well as, as it did before. Mm. Um because like you'd find a lot of guys would be up on the airbags. You think, oh, that's the quickest line, and then you could nip back up the inside of people. I think when they did make that change, the inside didn't. I didn't think I didn't get really good lines after they changed it. Well, I just started having to run up onto the airbags, and uh, and that's where I found the, the fastest way around. But you know, Lee was great around the curb. You know, around that place, um, and uh, you know, I, I would even say you know Lee Richardson was 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 sonic around there at times as well. So. Um, and even Majinski. Majinski was was frightening quick around there at that time. So, um, you know, but always a fast racetrack, Sur- uh, surprisingly fast, especially down the back straight. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully we get uh, some Swindon back at some point, uh, but we'll see. Um, Nigel brings up uh, about, obviously, that British final win. that uh, You seem to enjoy that one. That was obviously a big meeting to win. Uh, your thoughts and the memories of that one? Yeah, well, it, it'll be a hard one to describe to people because there was no one there. You know, it was COVID year, no fans. Um, the the whole build up to it, you know, with all the testing and you know what we had to do to like, you know, I was working at the time, so like I could have ended up contracting it, and and then then I might not have been there. I think a few people did. I think a few riders did contract it and had to pull out. I can't quite remember, but. Um, you know, all I will say is that it will be a unique championship and I don't think there'll ever be another one like it. Um, so, but a national championship is a national championship. Um, and to, to have won a, a, a British championship, um, you know, will always be, will always be memorable, always be mine. Um, and, uh, you know, not many people can say they've won a national championship. Um, and uh, like I've won a couple under twenty ones in Australia, and then obviously won a senior one here. So not many people have won multiple in different nations. So yeah, um, yeah mate, just it, it was just a night. You know, the drive home. I was at work <laughs> the next morning um, <laughs> at, at Hermes, and uh, so it was. It was yeah, it was just a crazy, crazy time. And like yeah. we were doing them, we did the warm up meeting as well with the ATPI versus Bellevue. I think it was Bellevue All Stars or something like that. Yeah. Um, which I believe that's why I think the streaming came in because it was such a success. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was just a strange, strange feeling that 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 meeting as well. So, um, but yeah, very memorable. Awesome. Uh, so, how old were you then, Rory, when you first got uh, a bike, and what bike was that? Was that a uh, motocross bike, spear bike? How did that uh, – what age were you in? What bike was I that? think I was five, and it was a Pee Wee 50, and I got it for Christmas. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, was it wrapped yeah. up? <laughs> uh, no, well, I don't think – no, it wasn't wrapped up. If I remember correctly, it was just sat by the Christmas tree, and we are in um, – I was at my uncle's property in Alice Springs. Yeah. Um, and um, – yeah, and that, I think that was why we were there. I think I can't quite remember. Was that? Jesus, was that long ago? But 
I do remember I learned some valuable lessons, especially because <laughs> um, riding it while we were there, I think we were there for a couple of weeks over the Christmas period, and um, I remember having my first crash on it, five years old, and I've crashed the bike out in the middle of the paddock somewhere, like just beyond, you know, where you could see. And I've come walking back, tears down my eyes, can't find my dad, can't find my mum. But who's in the workshop? But my uncle, Uncle Greg. And uh, he was a pretty hard nut, Uncle Greg. And he says, what are you crying for? And he says, where's the bike? And I'm, you know, oh, it's out in the field. He says, if you don't go get that bike, I'm going to go get it and I'm going to, I'm, I'll, really, I'll put it in the bin. You know, you go and get it. So I had to go and push the bike all the way back to the, to the, um, to the shed. <laughs> and then I was about to walk off and get, like, give it to him. And he says, no, 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 you start it and then you go back out. I got gravel up my arm and everything like that. And he made, <laughs> my uncle made me at five years old. I couldn't, I couldn't even kickstart it. And I managed to kickstart it. And yeah. he sent me on the way and I went and rode for another couple of hours. So you started you know, started that off then the the uh, yeah and it, get that's back always on, get stuck. Back on. yeah that mm. always stuck with me that that mm. always stuck with me and I think that's probably been one of the big things about um with the injuries I've had uh, mm. just my mental approach to it you know just get fit don't matter how you, how you got to do it just get fit you know get back up um you know I've had some pretty big crashes but yeah I think that that from an early age to be sort of we probably do need a little bit more of that, you know, just in society itself, really. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, and that stuck with me, you know, and I think things like that, just not just in Speedway, even in other forms of, of, of ways of life as well. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, definitely a thing. And like you said, sort of uh, you've been known for that. You've come back from some serious injuries, as you said. Mm. You've got to have that determination, but you said it's like in, in the mind as well, isn't it? Uh, to have that yeah. determination to come back and do it, it's not an easy thing. So you've got to have that in yourself. Mm. Mm, for sure. Done seriously well to get back from some of them injuries, for sure. Did you, was there any other times with them serious injuries you thought, this could be it this time? Uh, the, the the back injury, yes. I, yeah. I, I've spoken about it many times, but Ambulance, the – Yeah, yeah oh, I – Crazy. Yeah, laid on the track uh, with no feeling in my legs. Um, uh, it's it's you try and describe it to people in in a sense of you know you've got a family and the the, the things that were running through my head mm -hmm. weren't how am I going to pay bills or what am I you know what am I going it was I'm not going to be able to run on the beach with my kids go swimming with my kids yeah. All, all the, they, they were the things that were running through my mind. Um, and to go into surgery, like literally sign a document just as I was about to go into surgery, well, I had to actually ring after I'd signed the document. The document stated um, they had to translate it for me because it was in Polish. They said, um, you, you're, you're going into surgery, you've got a 50-50 chance whether you'll have the use of your legs or not. Um, and then I had to make a phone call to my missus, phone call to my mum and dad. Mm. They they were pretty hard. They they they're some of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, I think it was nearly seven hours on the table. Um, two rods, eight screws later, and uh, woke up and yeah, I could feel my legs, and it was a it was yeah a bit that that was I think for a good two three weeks I just said oh, I'm done I'm done there's nothing nothing mm. really, and then when everything calmed down and because I was in Poland for nearly three weeks and then got transferred, they flew me back. Uh, and then I was another two weeks in hospital in England. So it was about five weeks. Near, yeah. Over a month I was in, in hospital for, and mm. it wasn't until I think I got back to England that where I started thinking about racing or, you know, the possibility of, of getting fit. And, um, and uh, yeah. And, and I think, when I did, I'd come back from my back injury and then did my shoulder, I think, two months into the season. Oh, I went to Buster and I said, oh, you're looking for someone to work at the club? And Buster said, yeah, you can do marketing and stuff like that. So it never materialised. But, yeah, that that was uh, probably the second time the closest I got to, to packing it in. Oh, right, yeah, I see, yeah. I was going to ask you that. Uh, when you finish Speedway, would you be interested in being in Speedway in other ways or...? <clears throat> 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm involved, obviously, still with GB Youth. Um, we didn't get to do too much this year. Yeah. Just fixtures weren't allowing it. But um, I'm going to be heavily involved still with, with the GB Youth. Um, I want to I want to move forward in that in in a sense of of you know being more heavily involved, um, maybe in a managerial role, um, you know whether that's at club level, national level. Um, but I'll definitely want to stay involved. Um, the sports in me blood. I love working. I love working with the youth as well. Um, cause you know, I found, you know, a lot of them are open books and they just want to learn, um, especially Britain, you know, I've, I've been quite open about it, how you look at Sweden, you look at Denmark, you look at Poland, how they, how they look after their young lads and that. And, um, we finally have got a program where we, we are starting to support them in a way that, that they've never been supported before. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we've seen benefits of that, you know, with the likes of Tom Brennan, um, uh, Dan Buley, who are all part of uh, of the program. Um, and a lot of clubs benefit from it, like with people like Dan Gilks, Drew Kemp. Um, uh, you know, we had a young lad, Jordan Palin, who was who I, I, I'm so disappointed and, and, and frustrated for him that, that he walked away because I thought the kid had a lot of talent. Um, uh, but we've got a new breed now coming through. Um, there's some guys now. I've seen a couple of guys. Uh, I've got a pleasure to work with them at Leicester uh, probably four, four or five months ago. And uh, there's, some, there's some fresh talent coming through. So next couple of years, you'll see a few young lads coming through. There's a couple of lads there that have ability like Dan Bewley as well. So, mm-hmm. you, know, uh, you know, watch this space. Nice. I was going to ask you that, so you answered that already. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, I've got uh, Stephen Zetterwall here. He's our Swedish man. Um, I was going to ask you about Sweden and Poland. Did you enjoy riding over there? But it looks like, obviously, he's reminiscing about your time over there. Um, fights with Laguta Alert and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing I, I think I've seen that on YouTube as well. <laughs> there's, no as, there's no such thing as bad press. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good press, Roy. Well, good press. Yeah, I, I enjoyed racing in Sweden. Um, yeah. uh, I got to ride for a few clubs over there uh, Kumla, Hammarby, Eskilstuna, uh, Molilla. Um, I got to ride for Multala as well. Um, and uh, always strong, you know, like they always said Poland was, was strong. Poland's really strong now, but that, that era I ra- raced in Sweden, you'd be. Emil, so Emil would be at reserve. Um, Niels Christian Everson would be at reserve. You know, that's mm-hmm. how strong that league was at, at that time. Yeah. Um, and had some some great, great memories. Uh, probably my best seasons, I would say, was one, one was with Ex- Eskilstuna. Um, Harmerby was another one. Obviously, I think it was that year when I had I had me a uh, disagreement with 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 Gregor. Uh, but I, me, me and Gregor are, are, are good mates now, so you don't. You know, we don't, don't have to pull it, put any more fuel mm. on the fire on that. Um, I actually nearly got him to come to me farewell. I was Did trying, you? I was trying everything to get him to come to my farewell. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that just that didn't quite work out. But um, a lot, a few people know. But um, after all that, years later, he actually I raced for Ribnik one year when he he ended up getting a ban, um, and I replaced him at Ribnik for two or three meetings. And he actually lent me his bikes. Did he? Yeah, he, he lent me his bikes. Um, quick, <laughs> he, come, he, he come down to the pits. I brought a engine with me. He had an engine there to use as well. He said, don't change the sprocket, just use this. I said, are you sure? And I said, he said, don't use a, you don't change anything. I, I went out on it and, and it didn't feel right. <laughs> I made a change and then yeah, yeah, it felt a little bit better, but that was on my engine anyway. I didn't, I didn't ride his his engine. Uh, probably should have actually. Um, mm. uh, but yeah, uh, his bikes were, his handlebars were really narrow. His seat was rock hard as well. I remember that. And uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it took me a while. Like I practiced, I did a practice and uh, before the meeting and. His handlebars just felt so narrow. I was like, I kind of feel, I feel like I'm on a junior bike. Um, but uh, yeah, um, no, but I did, yeah, some some fond memories um, in uh, in Sweden. Um, and 
I would say learned a lot in Sweden, actually. I think I learned a lot there because I had to do a lot on my own there. I went there blind, if you should say, and I learned a lot on my own. And But I, my first year there, I raced with the likes of Kyle Alkenham, Hanka Gustafsson, Protasevich, Matt Aferian. You know, they were, the, they were my first team at Kumla. Yeah. And um, uh, learned a lot, yeah. Um, and... Uh, Always hard, yeah. Sweden was, was was always hard competition, for sure. For the record, you were justified at that time because I remember seeing the video and I was like, that was naughty. <laughs> well, I, I was more angry. I was more angry at, at the intent, not necessarily yeah, that he did. Yeah, yeah, looking, yeah, and um, I'd broken a bone. Nice. I'd actually crashed the night before in England, broken a bone in my hand, oh, and I was God. having an, I was having a – a crappy night, Shit, and man. and I and he'd he'd done other people that year. He'd, he'd fenced other people that year, and I just the red mist come a come a you know over me. Um, probably yeah. overreacted a little bit, but the people said I ghosted the bike in the pits. I actually didn't. I was actually pulled off my bike by the home team oh. manager. Yeah, the oh, reason yeah, the bike. Man. The reason the bike went off and skiddled everyone was because I got pulled off the bike. Yeah. And um, I would never, I would never ever, you know, endanger people like that. And I didn't even actually realise that it hit anyone because I was, I was, <laughs> I wanted to punch Greg's head in. That's why yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. worried about the bike. When I got pulled off, I, I pirouetted I it off and just done a spin a rooney and come straight back up. But, yeah. um, uh, yeah, it, it, that was an interesting night. Um, that that wasn't all. Like the the best thing about it was after it all calmed down because I was trying to get him into the car park as well at one stage. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 I I was ready. I, I didn't care. I probably was going to get my head kicked in, but I just had enough. I just wanted to. I just wanted to brawl that night. Um, <laughs> but after it cool calmed down, I'd gone out in a, my next race, and then I come back in, and I, the steward comes to me and says. Uh, Gregory Laguch has put in a protest. He wants to measure a bike. I said, you what? I couldn't believe it. I said, I said, yeah, no worries. I said, how much is it to protest to have his out as well? <laughs> and then they said, oh, it's this much. I said, right, I'll get, I'll get – you take card, I'll protest. And we, we were still at the track arguing with the referee and some of the officials um, about – because they wanted to take the engines away to Jan Andersons to be measured, but they didn't have any seals to seal the engines. Uh, okay. So I said, well, you can't take the engines away without them, without sealing them unless you measure them here. Yeah. So I said, no protest can be done. You don't have the seat like to seal the engines to send them to Jan mm -hmm. um, to obviously get measured or you measure them here. You know, do you have that facility? And they said, no. I said, well, you can't protest then. I'll have my engine back. Oh, and I'll have my money back as well. So, and then it never <laughs> happened. So it, the bikes never got measured. Um, but the the next week at Harmer B, the return leg, Harmer B was a sellout. So yeah, so yeah. I mean, yeah, people I put up on seats. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I need a percentage in that five ten percent. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the the, mo the embarrassing part was when I was walking through the airport the next morning. And the, the newspaper, it's on It's on the news, it's on the back page of the newspaper, so I was sort of just like that, ah, showing through the <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, good times. <laughs> people, yeah, people love a bit of controversy, as we know. Of course they do. Yeah. So what was your, uh, so you said you were uh, when you got five, so what was your, uh, in, how what was your first experience of Speedway then, and uh, how old, how did that happen, how old? Uh, well, I think I was at a speedway when I was maybe a month old. Uh, could even be younger, actually. My dad raced. My dad raced sidecars mainly. He did ride solos for for one year. Um, my uncle Greg raced sidecars. Uh, both my uncles raced um, spring cars and speed cars in Australia. Um, just the whole thing. I was brought up on it. Absolutely brought up on it. Um, Sort of took to British racing at an early age, started racing junior speedway. I think I, I think we just lost Rory there for a second. Hopefully, it'll come back. It was going a little bit funny there. I was just about to say to him, I think we're losing you a little bit, Rory. 
So hopefully uh, Rory will put the 50p back in that internet. <laughs> we'll get him on because I'm enjoying this. Hopefully he'll be back on in a sec. I'm sure he'll come back on. Just cutting up a little bit then, wasn't it? And we just, just managed to hear all that story, which was cool. <clears throat> I actually literally thought that was, you were talking about a Hoover to start with. <laughs> right, hopefully he'll be all right now. Hopefully it's going to come on. Don't know what happened there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there. So it was starting to break up a little bit, and then it was going a little bit. I was just about to say it's breaking up a bit, and then it seems to have sorted itself out now. Okay. Um, me all right? well, good. I don't know. What was I saying? I can't remember now. <laughs> you were saying about uh, get that you spent your life from one month old oh, in yeah, Speedway. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so I, and followed British Speedway from uh, – as young as I can remember, um, I was mad on British Speedway. You know, we'd order the Speedway stars, get rerun videos. Um, anyone that went to England brought anything back. I've, I've still got a, I've got a Cradley Heath from um, program board that uh, a friend of mine oh, yeah. brought back for me. Yeah, um, I've also got a Bellevue Aces race jacket. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what year it is. I'd have to ask my dad. And it's actually signed by Ivan Major. Wow. Um, I've actually got that. And it was actually, I think it was for, I think it was for my brother Craig. It was, you know, I think he had it. Um, I'd have to get a photo and, and send it to you. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, British Speedway was was it for me, you know, from a, from an early age. Um, watched, gosh, countless videos of all sorts. Um Remembering watching rerun videos of Coventry against Ipswich when Ricardson and Gollum were there and with Hamill and, and Hancock. Some of them races were just – I was just glued to the screen, absolutely glued to it. Um, and, uh, you know, even watching old videos of like back in the old Bellevue at the showgrounds, you know, with Chris Morton and, and all and guys like that. Um, major at the, old, at the old X of the grounds, you know. Uh, yeah, just, I, was, I was obsessed with it when I was younger. So who was your uh, idols and heroes then as a kid uh, when you were watching all that? Um, oh, Tony Ricardson was, was my favourite. Um, yeah. Just thought that the guy was a pro. He remind, like, when I say my, reminded me of my Uncle Warren, you know, the guy was just a gutsy rider, a um, uh, little bit flamboyant, which obviously you can notice with, with my, some of my colour schemes. Um <laughs> Uh, I really liked watching people like Kenny Carter, um, uh, uh, like Kelly Moran, uh, you know, Class. even um, uh, uh, Peter Carr. At, it's breaking up a little Hamble. bit, Rory. It's uh, breaking up a yeah. little bit. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, even, even Peter Carr. I uh, love. Oh, yeah. I, I, I watched so many videos of that guy around Edinburgh, um, and the things he did at that track. Just they, they they weren't possible, and I witnessed it. I was involved in races when even when I went there, how that guy turned that bike that hard and got got round so quick. Um, so uh, yeah, lots lots of guys I, I really enjoyed watching and 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 sort of idolised. Uh, we're going to try and uh, try and get Rory on again now. Let's see if it works now. Can you hear me now, Rory? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Don't know what happened there. And Craig mm. said, uh, "Bullshit, that's mine." <laughs> he, he probably knows he reckons, just works now. He, he reckons he's got uh, the. My dad won a trophy years ago. He, he won a a big uh, a northern like up in the north of Australia. There's a, a enduro race called the Camfari. My dad won that quite a few times, and there were these special buffalo horns for a trophy on a big plaque. Yeah. Um, and we argue about this all the time, and we, we wind <laughs> my dad up about it, you know, because in, in the will, 
apparently I get all the trophies and that's classed as a trophy. And Craig says, no, bullshit, that's mine. <laughs> so. Oh, classic. I, I, I thought I put the bloody picture on here because I put it up on the advertisement one of the picture on the view as a kid on the sidecar. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a cool picture. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> have you seen how much all this memorabilia stuff is now? This is what people are into now, isn't it? Yeah, I've, well, me mum, me mum's got plenty. Don't worry. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I got, I got, uh, yeah, lot, lots of me. Mum's got most of it. I've got some of it still here. Um, but yeah, uh, me mum's got most of me race suits. Um, I think some helmets and lots of stuff that that she's she's kept over the years. Um, no doubt they're just they're just collecting cobwebs. But um, she likes having them, and um, yeah, so. Uh, I got. I think I give my brother a helmet anyway. I don't know what he's complaining about. I'll have the hel- he can have the helmet and I'll have the horns. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, uh, what uh, year was it you come over? Was it two thousand and one when you come over? How did it all come over about coming over to the UK? How was all that all sorted out to come over and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, we you, we we'd signed even before I'd ridden a five hundred. Um, oh, right. um, uh, a lovely couple by the name of George and Helen Taylor um, were Edinburgh Monarch fans and they were coming backwards and forwards just for spending a lot of time in Australia. They've, they now live in Australia full time, but they're Edinburgh Monarch fans. And we got to got to know them um, and George become a little bit of a scout for the Monarchs for a bit there, you know, seeing the people like Max Crick, um, Aaron Summers, Matthew Weathers, um, quite a few guys, you know, come, you know, through 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 um, um, the Taylors and that. So mm-hmm. we, yeah, and I think oh, I won the Australian Under Sixteen Championship. A few weeks later, I'd signed, I think, for for Edinburgh, and I was supposed to ride. I wasn't signing for. I didn't sign for Edinburgh in the uh, Premier League uh, back then. Um, I'd signed for their Conference League. Oh yeah, okay. and. Uh, so that was all sort of sorted, and then that fell fell apart. And we landed, and a few days later, we got told that the conference league team wasn't happening. So we we're like, "What are we going to do?" So we literally just started travelling up and down the country, doing all sex, second halves. Mm. And I got a phone call one day, or John, um, John Campbell said Neil Mason from Sheffield yeah. was interested in bringing me to Sheffield at the Sheffield Prowlers, and. And the rest was history. So um, rode rode for Sheffield Prowlers. The first year I did 128 meetings, whether they were second halves or guest bookings and conference league. That was my first year. That was my first year in England. Yeah. Wow. That was insane. And no, I don't think I can describe the van we were in. It was bright yellow with a bright red stripe down the side of it. <laughs> it was uh, – I look back now and I just don't uh, – I remember turning up to Glasgow one day and this, the muffler had fallen off and, it, yeah, it was <laughs> really – I know, I've got to be honest, it never broke down. It yeah. never broke down. Um, I'd, I'd had new vans which had broken down after weeks. We caught it, but this thing, this thing was <laughs> – it was a bucket of old crap and it, it kept going. <laughs> I think it did, it, it did less than 50-mile uphill and, and managed to get to 70 downhill, so it was one of them kind of vans. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I think I might have had a few of them in the cross days. Um, so when what did you uh, did you obviously uh, as well when you went to the Edinburgh? You did uh, well there. Did you have a, was that a good experience for you? And um, who who helped you settle into the UK and that type of thing? Because it must have been a big shock for you to come over at that young age as well. And again, Hel- Helen and George were were yeah, big that, yeah. big parts, you know, of us coming, and um, obviously John Campbell. Uh, being one of the promoters of the club, got everything organised and stuff like that. So um, it, it was strange because I did come over with my mum and dad. At, at that time, there was a loophole where while I was under the age of 18, I could – my dad had patriality, so he, his grandmother was English. So he had patriality. He didn't need a visa. He just applied for residency and got it. So, but while I was under the age of 18, I was classed as a minor, so I could come under the same patriality rules. So I could sign on a three-point average instead of a seven. Nice. Um, and then so after the after the first year, um, 
I was still 17, so I was still – so Edinburgh signed me on a three-point average. Um, Tim Stone from Newport was trying to get me. There were so many clubs okay. trying to get me on a, on a three-point average. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, so then we obviously – we stayed with Edinburgh. That's where we wanted to be. And and th- that club was so family orientated. Like the, the crowd, the, the, the fans were part – but they – it just wasn't the seven riders. Like the riders would be part of the fans as well. Um, the the away the the away journeys and stuff like that. It, the fans would stay at the same hotel as the riders. They would go out to meals together, um, and the fans just it, it was just one big family. Um, oh. it, it, I think people like Max Frick, Craig Cook, Sam, they will tell you what 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 Edinburgh is like to ride for. Um, some very, very loyal backers who have been there from even when, when I went there, still there now. Um, and fantastic, fantastic club to ride for. Um, obviously, 2003, we won the league, which will go down as one of my first ever, like, big, big things to have won. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was uh, – it was it was always and it's always still nice to go back there now. You know, see so many people um, who I remember and 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 always you know get a great welcome there for sure. You've won a few of those. Um, uh, is it the Scottish Open? Uh, what's that? Uh, did happen? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. You've four uh, four Scottish Open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, it's and Peter that. Carr uh, are on equal terms for the most wins. Um. Uh. So yeah, I um. It, yeah. As 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 a club, as a track, have always enjoyed it. Um, still enjoy going there, um, and uh, I know they're looking for 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 new digs, obviously. Um, and uh, it'll be a shame because you know that place has character about it. I know it, it doesn't look like much from the outside, but the track has always produced some great racing. Yeah. Uh, quite a few of the guys have all been saying this as well. As uh, have you got any? Uh, what's the favourite tracks that you've got in the UK and the not so favourite tracks? Should we say? Uh, well, one of them's closed down <laughs> now, but um, Monmore was always was 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 a fa- like you know one of my favourites. Um, um, Coventry, I would say. I, I know it's not there anymore, but Coventry was. Don't know what it was. Uh, just from when my first time going there. I just always rode it well um, and just loved the shape of it. Fast, but you still had to turn. Um, it's probably why I enjoyed Kings Lynn as well because it had that similar shape. Um, but, uh, yeah, Coventry. Bell, look, I, I think everyone loves the Bellevue, the new Bellevue track because it's just yeah. so wide and open, but it's so frustrating if you're not, if you're not dialed in there. You can yeah. be so slow and it's so frustrating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would say Coventry. That was that was my favourite English track for sure. Was there? Is there any other ones you didn't used to get on with too well, and that you got to try and uh, conquer a bit more? I, uh, let's just say uh, Eastbourne. As much as I always had good meetings there, <laughs> as much as I, I, I always had good meetings there, I just – I went there and I felt – after the meeting, I felt tired. I felt um, – oh, I'm glad. I, like, I was so glad. Every time I, I, I left Eastman, I was just so glad I was done. I don't know why. I, I can't yeah. – I don't I, – I don't. it was just one of them tracks I couldn't – you know, it was in my diary and all of it. Oh, God, Eastbourne next week, next Saturday. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, quite a trick. And I don't know what it was, but always, always got scored plenty of points there. Um, so I, I'd say Eastbourne. Uh, um, Exeter, maybe, because it was so so rough and bumpy, but uh, didn't didn't ride there a lot. Yeah, didn't ride too many meetings there. Um, but, yeah, Eastbourne was, it was a funny one for me. Did you enjoy your time as well at Kings Lynn? Yeah, I, look, I I went there knowing that I always had good well, I always had good meetings there as well. But um, I went there in a stage in my career where I was sort of trying to refine myself a little bit because I'd sort of frog hopped around a little bit. Had a yeah. Had a, a the the 2012 year was was difficult in sense of. 
was riding for some clubs that I wasn't getting paid for. Um, went through uh, a, a situation with 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 Lee Richardson, um, which I don't think I I handled very well for, for over that 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 week that happened. Um, you know, I, the me and my, me and Scott were in Poland the the, the day it happened, and then had to race the next. I was I was forced to race. I said I didn't want to race. I was actually forced to race right. um, the next day. Um, I was up all night. I just I, I just I don't know. I, I didn't handle it very well for for a week. Um, like like most people, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. new league, but. Um, and I never sort of forgot that, at, you know, the, what happened that day. Uh, I lost a little bit of trust with people there that, that put me in that position. So at the end of the year where financially, you know, I raced for three clubs and didn't get paid by three clubs. Wow. Yeah. Um, that, year, that year was it was a tough year. Um, so I, I was looking for a new start, like obviously new new digs. So, yeah. and. I could have gone to other clubs, but uh, something I, I sat down with with uh, I think at the time was Jonathan Chapman, and then I went and ha- went and had a an Italian meal with Buster Chapman, uh-huh. and um, and uh, uh, over a, a bottle of red did the contract and become a uh, and and they they bought me as well, um, yeah. and um, yeah, and become a Kingsland rider and and really enjoyed my time there. Did a lot there. They had my testimonial. Did a charity like uh, Shave the Rue we did there, which was which was fantastic with the fans. The fans really got behind that, um, and uh, really enjoyed you know riding there. Um, great racetrack, um, and uh, you know I think a club that should have won some silverware by now, but just never never really got there. Mm. Funny enough, uh, I've been I'm speaking to Colin Richardson lately because I'm trying to get him on for an interview, and he's just come on. He just said, "Evening, guys from <laughs> Dubai." <laughs> Oh, Colin. Uh, and he, said, he put here that he watched your documentary the other day. I can relate to it after breaking my own back at Exeter in 1986, which forced my retirement. Yeah. Um, quite a few people, you, you, you wouldn't realise how many people have actually broken their back. Obviously, not to the extent that some of someone like Darcy or, or yeah, Lee Adams yeah. and Gollum, stuff like that. But yeah. it, it's it's scary, mate. It's, mm. It is, uh, you know... Some crazy. The, I'm not going to go into, it, but there were some crazy things I had to deal with mentally just to get yeah. right to, to even think yeah. about getting back racing. So, um, uh, you know, breaking your leg and uh, breaking your collarbone, it's 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 not on the same. It's not even on the same page, yeah. mate. Yeah, like you said, a long time laid on your back, and all sorts of things mm. must be going through your mind. Like you said about your family and things affect you. So, got to have a strong mentality to come back from that uh, for sure. So. But uh, we're not going to feel uh, Colin's over in Dubai and keeps going bragging about the temperature and stuff like that to me. And I'm like, cheers, Colin. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's enough. That's enough now, Colin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So hopefully I'm going to get him on in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be uh, interesting. And a good chat with him as well uh, about his career. Uh, Roy, do you watch the GP series much? Do you watch that on the TV? What, what's your thoughts about the GP series? Uh, would you like to be in it? Oh, I would have loved to have been in it. Um, come close mm. after 2011. Um, had a phone call from someone in the Grand Prix um, asking, would I be interested in a wild card? Uh, and I said, does a bear shit in the woods? Um, <laughs> uh, had a few quick phone conversations, but then realised that it wasn't down to who was qualified or deserves the spot. Mm. It's what you brought to the table. So very MotoGP like yeah. uh, position it was, and um, and it didn't obviously turn out how I, I, I was hoping, but. Yeah, it came close that year. Um, I was in the sh- I was in the running for it, but it, it didn't happen. I've always loved the Grand Prix um, from even from the earlier days when Ollie ran it. Mm. If I'm honest, from a personal viewpoint, yeah, I think it's run its course. 
Interesting. I think the Grand, the Grand Prix doesn't offer – it's a little bit like Speedway in general. It, they haven't changed the way they market it, run it. It's still the same way they did, ran it back in 95. Mm. 16 riders, 20 heats, and, and fine. Well, it, 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 if you've been amongst it, it's – not, I'm not saying boring, but I mean, there's nothing exciting about the new season in a Grand Prix anymore. Mm. Nothing gets the fans excited. Like they wait for the new riders and they get excited, and then all of a sudden they and announce new riders, and then there's a load of flack and a load of yeah, I've seen people. that. Yeah. 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 So for me, I think the Grand Prix ha- has to restructure itself in a sense of I think the format needs to change. And it's so easily doable. The format needs to change. I think, you know, I've been involved in in races like at Bellevue in part of its. I think the I, my personal opinion, I think they need to follow somewhere like what the the Supercross are doing in America, where they do, um, I think uh, what is it, the Triple Crown, mm. some nights where they they just change it. They they switch it up where the point scheme changes on the night. So. You can have a wildcat come in and all of a sudden go from fifth up to the top. I mean, it brings excitement. And I think going to places like Bellevue, part of its big tracks in Poland, like Ostrov, Lesno, where you can run six riders safely, it would bring a different, uh, obviously, format, but different dynamic to how the riders approach the meetings as well. Because mm. the format would be different, the point scoring would be different. Um, mm. I think the 20 heat formats just run its course. That's my opinion. I think you still mm. run it if you're going to run 10 rounds, you run say five rounds at normal places like Torren and, and places like that and Prague and stuff. But then I think you go and find venues, you go and find venues and you, you cater to the format and not necessarily to the GP's back pocket because at the minute that's all it is it's a cash cow. At the minute they just keep taking money off clubs, keep taking money off clubs. And um, and I think they they should promote it and then take the profit instead of how, you know, their structure is. But I think it just needs to be reformatted. I think there has to be a fresh feel to it. Um, uh, I think they're getting the look right, you know, with the lights, the camera. I think that's been asked, that's been w- wanting for so long. Um, it. I'm a little bit confused with the transponders held on by tape on the front fork cover. Mm. I, I don't, I don't get that. Mm. Um, you always see the front court, front fork covers are always offset because the weight on one side is always popping one side up. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just think it, it it needs some fresh ideas. It needs, it just needs to be restructured top to bottom, um, and uh, I think that would get a little bit more excitement to to the crowd. You know, with something fresh and new. Yeah, I think you would have actually made me excited listening to your ideas of the changes. I'm like, right, I'm going to get Amanda Castagna on the phone now. <laughs> We're going to dice this out, Rory. <laughs> Don't worry, it's, it's like, speedways like it. Speedways like anything. Someone will t- say this, and then 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 my idea will be stolen, and then yeah, someone else will will make yeah, money from it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, Nick uh, Nikki yes, yeah, just put as well. Fair play about the GPS. I like to see the one-offs back. I'm the old. I'm the age that the one-offs were king. Rory, you are talking sense. We need a variety. Like your ideas, oh, yeah, I like the ideas as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I think we're we're in that stage where I think one off you you can't. Um, I still think, like I still think you bring back the inter, like the the days of the intercontinental final, the overseas final, because I think the qualifying system now isn't. There doesn't it, you know? There's no excitement behind it. You know, I remember you know when people like Sullivan won the Intercontinental Final, Lions, he won the overseas. It, they were big meetings. They they were promoted and they were really big meetings and they meant something to riders because that was a way into the Grand Prix. Yeah. Now it's like, you know, certain countries get more riders in these semifinals than others. Like, it shouldn't be that way. It should be mm. the best riders who qualify. Mm. You know, I'm, a, I'm against – the the wild cards in a sense of if you were injured in the year 
fair enough. I think, you, you know, if you got injured, you were in the top eight or, you know, by all means, I, I do think that. But the you know, riders over the years have just been constantly given wild cards over and over and over again and they don't make the top eight or they don't make the top six. Mm. Um, and they're not necessarily put in there on the basis of merit. They're put in there because they're from a certain country, they put bums on the seats or whatever. Mm. Um, so, you know, but it's down a bit political, but mm. it's not, you don't have to be a scientist or, you know, to, to see that. And mm. it's a shame. And I think that's what's taken the shine off, off the Grand Prix a little bit. Um, mm. You know, they're, they're, even this year, I still think there are better riders out there that deserve yeah. to be in the Grand Prix, but they're not being given the opportunity. No, I was going to say that was the thing that's uh, made me think a little bit as I wanted this definitely a lot of riders that are not in it that you want to see in it. Mm. Uh, well, the, the and eight, these guys for <laughs> Yeah, the old system where the top eight would stay in, fine. Maybe the top six, I think that's probably right. I'd even go down down to say the top three mm. and then the rest have to qualify. You go through the, you do the intercontinental, you do the overseas and you go through the whole pro, you've got to go through the whole pro, you've got to earn your spot in the Grand Prix. Mm. Um, I, I that's my opinion. Um, people might not share it, but I, I think that creates more variety. I think you get the better you get the better lineup at the end of the day, because um, you have got the top riders there. You're not just spoon f- feeding, you know, certain riders. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, um, no, you look, you look, you look at it in this way with with the reserves they've they've put in this year. I, I love Magic, great guy, fantastic rider. But on merit, did he deserve a reserve slot? I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he. Okay, he's had an off year, but you have an off year, you've got to come back, fight your way back to the top. You know. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. I, I, you know, Doyley's a perfect example of it, where Doyley's career was almost finished with two shoulder injuries then fought his way into the Grand Prix, should have been two times world champion, but becomes world champion and fights every nook and cranny. And I think if he didn't qualify, you'd f- – and he does the qualifiers every year. Mm, Doyle does the qualifiers every year because yeah. I think whether that keeps him hungry or not, but, I mean, I think all riders should do that. Like Jack Holder yeah. does it as well. Yeah. So um, – and I think that takes a bit of pressure off them if they know they get through, they know they're good enough, it takes the pressure off them in the later rounds and they can sort of work on things for the following year. Mm. So, yeah, I, I just well, think... even top five, even, like you said, top three, even if it was top five, top like you said, three, top eight. And then, and, then, and then you get the proper, throughout the season, you get, you know, yeah, maybe March, April, you have a load of qualifying um, meetings in there and overseas and intercontinental, European, like even the European final. I think the European final over rounds doesn't work. Um, I think it should be a one-off, you know, and, uh, you know, the winner of that goes in, the winner of the Intercontinental goes in, the winner of the overseas goes in, you know. Um, they were good meetings, weren't they? Well, you'd get the best, you know, the best of of of, of what you've got. So, yeah. yeah. Colin Richardson, I think you're on the right track. Look at what F1 have done with the sprint races. It's, it's something different. It's something new. It, it, I, I don't, and and the sprint races are quite enjoyable to watch, mm. um, and uh, but yeah, like the Supercross, they bring in the Triple Crown, they change it, they switch it around, um, and like they're starting to bring in different. Before. I know we do a qualifying session now, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's the fairest way to do the qualifying. The what how they do it, I think it should be done over t- like. You pull out a number, 1 to 16 or whatever, you're going to do it. So if you draw number one, you go out first. And then you have to do a second timed, but you do it at number 16. Mm. So And then you have – so if you were number eight, well, you you know, you stay at eight, you, you'll be in the middle order. But then you combine the two and then you get a proper um, timed, I think, time trial or you know, yeah, qualifying saying, yeah. session. And I think that would be a fairer way in doing it. Got some bloody good ideas there, Rory. <laughs> well, I've, I've mentioned these to certain people uh, higher up in Speedway fraternity, but yeah, uh, sometimes it's like talking to uh, a barn door sometimes. <laughs> 
I'm going to be like, uh, right, Mr. Castagna, Morris, you need to watch this back. <laughs> There's some bloody good ideas on there. Got me excited. They've both, they've both got my number, so they can ring me anytime. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna say you need to watch this uh, interview back. I know they come on quite a bit as well, so hopefully <laughs> they'll see this. and they, they probably will nick the ideas then. <laughs> Most likely, yeah. <laughs> no percentage again, Rory. You know? No, no. 10% of F4, that's, that's, that's what that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, did you try any other um, motorsports? Uh, did you have any go at road racing, done any enduro, motocross, all that sort of stuff? Just watch, wait, watch your space. My brother will put a comment here in a minute. Um, no, <laughs> I've, I've, proved, I've proven to myself that I'm no good on a motocross bike. Um, okay. I never rode a road bike. Um, uh, don't know. Uh, speedway was just my main thing, really. Um, lo I love motocross. Lo I love watching motocross. Love riding a bike. Um, but yeah, yeah, the talent sort of runs out um, on a motocross bike. So um, it's a shame because I really like it. But uh, no, no other forms really. I've, I've driven a sprint car once. Uh, drove my uncle's sprint car once, well, which well, I've got to be honest is probably the best feeling I've ever had outside speedway, it, like it's sporting or whatever. Unbelievable. Um, hmm. Yeah. Un unbelievable feeling to ride, to, to drive a sprint car. There's no, only that there's uh, speed riders. Like I think uh, Chris Holder's driven one. Um, uh, Sullivan's driven one. Um, I think Crumpy may, may have driven one, I think. Uh, but yeah, I I uh, I had the opportunity to drive one, and uh, will always remember that. I tell you, it's an unbelievable feeling, um, you know, to drive one of them. How is Ryan Sullivan? Have you spoke to Ryan Sullivan? I haven't heard anything from him for a long time. Ryan Sullivan. Uh, he was over a year, a couple of year ago, I think. He he came over a couple of year ago, um, doing the rounds and that. So I think it was my last, not my last year, but the year before I went back to Oz. I think I saw him for a brief spell. I think it was that. Cardiff, I think. Mm. Been. Um, but yeah, he keeps a bit of a low profile. He doesn't live far mm. from Darcy uh, on the Sunshine Coast. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, he does pop up now and again, I believe. I might try and get hold of Darcy and see if you can get hold of him, see if he'd come on. That'd be cool to speak to him. He's a bloody good rider. Uh, um, in my eyes, underrated. Yeah. I think, I think, I think, should have probably done a bit more. Mm. Um, so fast. I've seen some meetings where I uh, just, yeah, surprisingly, well, not say surprisingly, but just so fast. Like you think uh, he doesn't look like he should be fast, but he was. He was sonic at times. Yeah. Um, you know, he was he was one guy in Poland that you would say you go to Poland, you think you've got to worry about the Poles. No, you had to worry about Sally because he was just so fast um, on the big tracks. Yeah. Yeah, he was very good. I remember him around Peterborough as well. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. He loved that place, didn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. The old Peterborough, the narrow Peterborough. Yeah. Yeah. Bulls. I got the bulls. <laughs> yeah, someone just put Ryan Panthers lead in, for sure. Yeah. So, definitely. Uh, Simon's just put, uh, what does Rory think of successful teams being penalised for winning trophies? Oh, I'm gathering he means the, the averages and all that. Um <laughs> <laughs> More politics. They've been watering down the product for over a decade. Um, the basis should be, in my eyes, and, and other people have, have shared this view, um, that the team that wins the league, that average that team ends up on is the limit it should be set at. It shouldn't be... The team that won the league has to has to come down, has to you know meet the requirements and the standards of the other teams that weren't successful. Mm. Why not the other teams invest and and build and grow and get better? Mm. You know, it always can't seems. Can't think of any other sport that does anything like that. Can you? I can't think of there any isn't. Sport that brings... There no. isn't. There isn't. Um, and. Unfortunately, that's what you've got when you've got a self-governing body. Mm. You take that away from the BSPA and you give it to a panel or a board, uh, you know, a neutral board, 
Mm. He said, right, that's the rules. You build them. I, there's no budget. We're not putting a budget on, but we will put a limit on. But you you spend what you want on the riders. Mm. And that, or, you know, but that's the average. So um, uh, Sheffield won the league. Right. So whatever that average Sheffield ended up on, that mm. average, right, that's, ne- that's next year's, that's the, that's the, that's the limit. So everyone then has to go hunting, right? Hey, we've got this. We've got this to play with. We we can we can we can work with this. Or well, you know, we might have to find a sponsor to bring in a big, you know. But for a decade now, Br- British Speedway doesn't seem to want to do that. Mm. They they might they they say they do, but you know, actions speak louder than words. Um, you know, like the championship. Uh, you know, they're saying, oh, because you know. We don't have the riders. It's funny how all these big names are coming back, and it's funny how for many years clubs have said they've got no money, but I know for a fact what these big guys are on, and it's a lot of money. Mm. So, uh, you know, all these clubs saying they're not making money, but they seem to be able to afford to bring people like Emil Doyle, you know, Dan Bewley back, you know, all, all these guys, but, yeah, it's it's it, for me. I think the day the BSBA allow a not a consortium but a panel to set the guidelines, the rules, all that sort of stuff. I think the sport will grow. Mm. While it's been governed, why it's been governed governed by itself, mm. it won't grow because everyone's everyone will have you know their own their own personal that. interests at heart, yeah. and it, it just yeah. it will never evolve and it will never grow. Yeah, that's the trouble, isn't it? With the, you can't help but have, if they've got their personal own club, you know, yeah. needs or wants or whatever, that's the only trouble, isn't it? Well, we we saw we saw the Super League in the in the football. They tried mm. to do their own self governing, and look look what happened. It bit them in the backside, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. It don't work, you know. No. So. Yeah, very interesting. Um, well, even thinking about something more positive, you've seen probably. Oh, well, yeah, I know you know that. Uh, obviously, Birmingham have gone up, uh, and Oxford are going for three teams. I don't know. What did you think about that? That's like obviously a big, big thing for them to go for all three teams. They did well with the championship thing last year. I went there a couple of times. It's probably my closest one now, and it's it seems a, a good night down there and well run. But uh, what's your thoughts on all that? Uh, Oxford has a huge has a huge fan base. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, rode there a few times this year, and, and probably some of the biggest crowds I've seen at, at British Speedway, bigger than some of the Premiership teams. Mm. Um, uh, I didn't know they were doing three. I mm. did, but you've just told me they're doing three teams. Um, I knew they were doing two before you just told me. And my exact mm. words to Jamie Courtney is, "You're brave." Um, mm. But if I know Jamie, which I do. He wouldn't do it unless he was a hundred and ten percent no he can do it and do it the right way and where the fans would appreciate it. Mm. Uh, so I you know, I can't not seeing it not work. Um and I think it's a bit of a as I say, I think it's a bit of a look at this because I can't see any other club doing that. Mm. Uh, and I'll tell you what, if they make a success out of it, it sort of makes the other clubs look a little bit under under par or, you know, if the Oxford fans get three leagues, they're going to have so many meetings at Oxford this year, and that's what fans want. Mm. You know, Very everyone good. keeps moaning that we've got less meetings, less meetings, less meetings. Oxford are trying everything to put more meetings on. Mm. So... Fair play to them. I, I really do hope they have a, a successful year in, in, in that sense. Yeah, same. I'm going to get down there a bit more as well. It'd be interesting. I enjoyed it. Uh, I, just hope, I, just hope this, I just hope they've straightened up that light post I had a, an encounter with while I was there. <laughs> do you like the Oxford track? Might get the phone call for that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good little track. It's, it, it's quite technical. Um, mm. there's, a, there's quite a bit of clay in it, but the, the times I raced there this year, uh, track road really good, um, and uh, it, I, it, I, I, it, I don't have to work hard at that track. I know there's some people say it's hard to get, you know, get the grip there, but it's a. Tr- 
I rode the old auction where it was grippy and rough and yeah. it was it was that was hard work. Um yeah. back, back in the old days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh so no, I, I enjoyed it. Um but I, I think they'll they'll they they'll have a good pick of riders in my in my eyes. Um moving forward, I think they'll they'll put a really good side together. I see Scott's uh, committed to the, the championship team. Um, not mentioned any uh, the premiership side of things yet, but I don't know if, yeah, it'd be interesting. I could possibly see some Wolves riders going there. Mm. Maybe. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Martin's just put there, uh, Rory's Heat 13 race at Oxford with Berwick against Sam and Scotty was phenomenal. I know. I ended up third. <laughs> I was in front, I think. Um, yeah, I, guess I, got, I think I got I got caught out in that one because I didn't know really which line was quickest at that time of night. I could hear Sam on the inside. I could hear Scott on the outside. I went, I got to commit. And by the as soon as I re- like realised that I need to commit to one line, they both went past me off turn two. Um, but. Yeah, I've, I've had some great battles with Scott and um, Sam over the years. Scott, I've raced with, Jesus, um, I think, I, you know, I've been racing against him since I was 18, you know. So yeah. um, we always race hard. Like we, we, we really, you know, when we race against each other, we'll push each other. But the thing with Scott, um, he'll lean on you, he'll push you to the, you know, to the, to the point where, you know, he gives you the option to turn off and vice versa, you know, yeah, um, yeah. and that's how speedway racing should be. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, he, uh, we're we're better the old statesman, really. Me, him, and Bomber. So um, yeah. we'll see if we get better with age. <laughs> Bomber is, yeah, Bomber. Yeah, oh, and Scott, I, I got. I got to be honest, Scott. Scott was dynamite this year to start with. Yeah. Um, the beginning of the season, he was sonic. Um, but yeah, and, and Bomber, yeah, I don't know what it is. He, he whatever he eats or, or whatever. But yeah, he, um, he, yeah, he got he goes pretty fast at the end of this year. That's for sure. Yeah, he got rider of the year. Like he's, like you said, he won all the leagues. He's always he always comes good for the playoffs. So whoever he's riding for, even if he's guesting for someone and wins a. Um, well, I, I reckon I reckon Janeiro would have to to hand over like maybe the 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 guest king. I oh, know who's the bonus point king. Sorry, yeah, bonus point, um, it, yeah. But, yeah, bonus but Bomber's point, definitely yeah. the guest king for sure. Yeah, he has been over the years, and especially for the playoffs, <laughs> mm. whether his team was in it or not. Um, did you always, <laughs> have you always preferred uh, being part of a team, uh, or did you like racing as an individual more, or both the same? Ah. Uh, Again, it's di- a different uh, mindset uh, when you go to the meetings. So, um, especially now, you, you're if you're in a team, you're you're talking to the lads in the week on the WhatsApp group, and you're meeting up with them once or twice a week. But an individual, you go there, and you're your own person. You know, you're not there to support someone. You know, to try and look out for someone. You're there for one goal, and that's to beat. The fifteen other riders. Um, the strangest thing is, like sometimes you race with someone, and then you get a few nights later you're racing against them. Um, but that's the, that came very easy in the speedway turns because we were doing that so often. You'd race with, you know, I'd race with Bomber in Coventry, and then race against him in Sweden really? on the yeah. Tuesday, yeah. back to England, race with him, and then go back to Poland and race against him. You know, so. Um, it was just the way it was. It's the way it is, really. But uh, you know, I think I preferred racing league, or you know, racing with a team. You know, just the camaraderie and and, on, and, and you know, be being part of that. Um, and uh, you know, that's what I probably miss the most. You know, at Wolves. You know, the the, the, the team atmosphere and uh, you know what Pete used to gel together was was fantastic. Oh. Did you? Uh... What do you do for fitness wise, uh, Rory, in the, su- in the summer, <laughs> winter uh, for Speedway? What's the sort of things you normally do? It doesn't sound like the motocross bike comes into it much. I was going to say, right right now, it's that with the T. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about That's six T's I, I, six, six or, or so a day. So um, that's the most exercise I'm doing at the minute in the office. But 
Um, I'll probably start. I'll probably start my fitness uh, regime maybe in the new year. Uh, just because at the minute we've, I'm flat out at work, so not much time really to to get to the gym. You know, put in a good session, get home, and then be back at work the next morning. So <laughs> when things start quieting down at work, so in the new year I'll start. So it'll be a solid twelve week um, uh, camp, and then um, my weight's pretty good uh, at the minute, so I don't really need to lose a lot. Uh, I think I only got to lose four kilo to get to my optimal weight. Um, so yeah, it won't won't take a lot. And um, mainly, you know, I even learned stuff off when I was doing the Team GB stuff with the youth. You know, still picked up learning small things. Um, so try not to build as much muscle, keep lean. Um, and uh, you know, it's surprisingly something that I picked up. Uh, at the Institute of Sport in Australia, how speedway is similar to weightlifting, as in uh, the the exertion of of heart rate down and up and down and up. Um, where we do it five times a night, you know, a weightlifter comes out and bursts out a, a you know ten second of, of absolute pure power and energy. Mm. Well, we do that for four laps in sixty seconds, and then we yeah. come back down. Yeah. We have about three races break, then we're back up. Like our heart rate is just stupid for 60 seconds and it drops and goes back up where you look at the motocross riders and the MotoGP riders, their heart rate's at a high level yeah. but it stays there for 30 minutes or, you know, 20, 30 laps. You know, it just stays there. So they, they can train easier to an extent because they got to maintain a heart rate where we do that. Bang up, mm. down, and it and a lot of us guys, where when you say, "Oh, are you physically drained?" and it's not physically drained, you're you're just because your heart rate's up and down, and mentally mm. you're drained in that sense. Yeah, after a you know, you that, that's why people say you only do five minutes work, but you come out of it and you're absolutely knackered. Mm. Um, and I believe it's through that. I think it's because your heart rate goes so high up then drops so quickly and goes back up again and goes, you know. Um, I don't know if there's any other sport like that. It's a strange one, really. Um, mm. You know, even sprinters, you know, 100-metre sprinters, they 100 metres and they stop. They don't then do another race. I was just race. about to say that. I was just what I was thinking. I was thinking yeah, 100 metres so, and sprint. Have you seen them at the end? They're absolutely – Yeah, it's a difficult one wow, for yeah. anyone to to set a program. Well, we do have pro- – yeah. like, we have certain programs in place, but – to get to that optimal fitness, it's a hard one to nail down what's best for each rider, and I know everyone's different. So um, mm. for me, I, I do a lot of one minute off, one minute on, one minute off, one minute on, you know, sprints on on, on a spinning bike and stuff like that. Mm. So it's just training your, your heart and your body to get used to that up, down, up, down, up, down. Mm. So, um, Interesting. you know, yeah. What about um, – uh favorite team riders uh, over the years as in like to team ride with on the track has there been some riders that you've had a special little click where you don't really have to work on it too hard and you sort of comes together has there been riders over the years um teammate wise i think who i gelled really well with on track mm-hmm. um i would say jake uh, jacob torsell we yeah. When I rode at Wolves with him, we seemed to just know where we were, where, where each other was. Mm. Um, um, Hank Gustafsson in Sweden, uh, he was fantastic to race with. Yeah, um, as in someone who I just enjoyed riding with, there's two riders who I just absolutely enjoyed riding with. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say Sam Masters was one. We we rode well together, me and Sam, but Sam Masters was one we just always got on. Um, and Danny King. Danny King. Mm. I tell you what, if he were a speedway rider, he'd be a comedian. <laughs> he, he has some of the he has <laughs> he has some of the shittest dad jokes you've ever heard, and they're so <laughs> funny. Um, and I always tell him, I always tell him, every time you see me, you got to have a new one, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my time at Ipswich, I really, really enjoyed. And then, and he was a big reason why I went to Paul as well, you know, to, to okay, ride with yeah. him again. Yeah. Um, 
And, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed riding with him. Uh, even on a down night, you know, he can still make you laugh. Um, so, yeah, probably them. I think team rider-wise, I think the best I've seen, mm. there's two guys, two guys for me, the two best team riders I've ever seen, Darcy Ward and Peter Carr. Mm. Um, two completely different riders, two different eras. Darcy could stop a bike on a dime, turn it, not lose any speed, cover two riders, and then come off the corner off the, on the back wheel. Um, uh, so for me, yeah, probably one of the most talented guys I've ever seen on a speedway bike. Peter Carr yeah, yeah. was a guy who pushed me to a point because I, I rode with him. He was at three and I was at four. He would always be on the inside. I always wanted to be on the inside but could never get there because he was there. <laughs> But I didn't know at the time, but he was pushing me and pushing me, and it actually made me go quicker and quicker and quicker. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so for me, them two, yeah, probably the best team riders I've ever seen. Who would you say have been the uh, biggest influences in your career to date? Uh, just in general? Yeah, well, yeah, on track, off track, with these, all the influences in your racing. and uh, The main one would be my Uncle Warren. Yeah. Uh, I just grew up idolising him. Um, yeah. uh, not just as a, as a racer, but just a, as, a, as, a, as a man, as, you know, as a man as well. Um, he, uh, he taught me a lot about winning and losing um, from an early age. Loved watching him race in, 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 in midgets and speed cars. Um, and, uh, yeah, he was one that I, I fed off. My dad was a, my dad was, was a, my biggest supporter. Um, but, you know, my dad had a, had a way of racing. He, he was a good gator, um, bit of an animal on the bike, especially on the sidecar where my uncle was a bit different. He had a bit of flamboyance about him, a bit of, you know, rawness, which I seem to just feed off. Um, uh, my dad had a lot of determination, but, you know, idolised it. It was more my, my, my uncle, you know. Um, you know, some of the things I see, see him do in a race car was just, yeah, gobsmacked. <laughs> so you got some uh, good vibes off of both of them, by the sounds of it. Uh, ten pits yeah. from each. <laughs> yeah. You become the man you are. Um, what about uh, your time at Bellevue? You said uh, you sort of touched on it briefly earlier. Did you enjoy your time with Bellevue? You had obviously different times there. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, my first time I, I raced w uh, under John Perrin, you know, and he, he was a, a proper character. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it in, in such like 2011 was one of my best years, I think, in in sense, um, not just in England, abroad as well, but um, I went to Bellevue from a year where – Again, I was rebuilding because of Coventry. They didn't want me. Yeah. Uh, they'd let me go halfway through the year. So yeah. uh, I went to Bellevue with Bomber. Bomber was in the sort of the same sort of stage as well. Um, and uh, and it was weird. We both fed off that year. Uh, Bomber, I think, finished fifth that year in the Grand Prix. And um, yeah. I had my best year as well. And it was a really good year. We we got second in the, I think, the pairs, me and Bomber, and we reached the Knockout Cup final. Um, so uh, personally, uh, for myself, I really enjoyed it there. Um, it wasn't everyone's cup of tea, the, the old Bellevue track. Um, if yeah. you made it work, you, you could make it work. Um, yeah. It was just a little bit unfortunate. 2012, we were hindered by rain-offs. You know, there were pay issues. There was a lot of things going on that year that just didn't, wasn't positive and and um it was just a shame but you only have to look at the the club now under under the ownership and the guidance of 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 the people there yeah you know people like ian citizen um you know from atpi uh rich from rent right they got some great great people in and amongst that club um where that's you know why they're at that track you know um and uh, I think it's a credit to everyone the way that they they run that place now is is mm. you know it's like clockwork. So, um, yeah, you know, could I have stayed? Could I have done more years there? It was it was definitely a possibility, but I just at the time it wasn't right for where 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 I wanted to go. 
Uh, you're, um, I was going to say, on the front of the Speedway Stars, things like that. Do you, did you, uh, do you like that sort of thing? Obviously, it's good for sponsors and things like that. But uh, oh, it's always like nice I said, yeah, like I said, there's no such thing as bad press. But no. um, <laughs> yeah, but as a as a young lad, you know, when yeah. you made the cover of the Speedway Star, it was like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I'm not saying you've made it, but you know, that it, it was sort of a, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, I'm keeping that cover and um, <laughs> yeah. yeah Always, I've got, I've got quite a few of them still, like in the old, um, uh, what do they call it, the newspaper book, or what do you call it? This, the uh, yeah, the um, oh, I forgot what they call them. Um, the article book, yeah. Well, I've, I've got quite oh, a few the of them. Oh, the magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and always, always been a supporter of the Speedway Star, oh, uh, yeah. but I think that the the era of the. Um, uh social media um yeah. has sort of hindered it and i oh, think that's yeah, just the way yeah. it's the way society has gone and 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 i just think you know the magazines are sort of starting to you know work their way out i guess it's a shame but you know that's just the way the world has gone yeah i speak to brian burford quite a lot that does uh, bits in there and he lives not far from me i go and see him and yeah he's that is pretty much the thing, because uh, he's like he said, it's like I got a clue on social media. That older generation, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> and I'm always like trying to like tell him the ways and that, but it's not easy to do that thing where they're they're not interested either. But um, no. what about uh, representing Australia, uh, Rory as well? That must have been uh, a cool thing for yourself. Uh, yeah, I was I was lucky enough to obviously race in a few World Cups and Test matches and. Um, you know, got to race with with some of Australia's best riders, uh, Crumpy, Lee, Todd Wilshire, Ryan Sullivan. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and I learnt a lot. Um, yeah, I think you know, the I, I do have some regrets in a sense of, I think it was 2011 where I got left out of the World Cup final. Yeah. And um, that year I was, you know, not, you know, bigging myself up, but that year I was <laughs> riding really well. Yeah. I had an off night. The, yeah. I had an off night in the semi final, and, you know, yeah. fair enough. But, yeah, some things had happened, you know, prior to the final, and uh, I wasn't actually I – was, I was at the practice, did the practice, uh, but I left straight after the practice. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but okay. some things happened and and uh, that didn't sit well with me. So I said that was it. I'd, I'd never race for Australia again. Um, and uh, I, I think I did a favour for Lemo one year where I raced in in a meeting in Poland. It was again Poland versus Australia. Um, and it was only for a favour for Lemo and I didn't think that was it. Um I wish I wish I hadn't, but I just felt pretty pretty hard done by. Um, probably treated not that well that year. Um, mm -hmm. It was hard because I, I, you know, I'm an, I've always said I'm an Aussie. I've yeah. always said I'm Aussie. I've ne never never you know never said I was British or anything like that. And some people might say, why did I ride for Britain in the <laughs> European pairs. I remember. Uh, yeah. And you'll probably find this funny, but I was approached by Mr. Alan Rossiter at the Swindon Pits. Where's you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I believe Lemo was there that night as well. But that year I was riding quite well, like really yeah. well. Um, and I got, you know, I didn't even get asked by Lemo, even though I said I wouldn't. But <laughs> The funny thing was Roscoe just come up. He couldn't get anyone to ride. At the, at the time, all he had was Robert Lambert, and Robert hadn't – like Robert was only racing in England, Germany. He wasn't doing Poland, Sweden, or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Roscoe came up to me and says, I hear you're on a British licence. I said, yeah. You're going to ride for Great Britain um, in two days' time in, in Denmark. I said, bloody hell, Roscoe, you, you're going to put me between a rock, rock and a hard place here. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, ah, oh, can't be fine. I thought, and then, <laughs> and then, then the offer came through. I said, "When's me flight?" 
<laughs> good, good, good. So, um, you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did it for a little bit of – I did it for shits and giggles, but at the same time it was a great earner and um, I had a bit of, I had a bit of fire in my belly and, and uh, uh, Britain, Britain ended up beating Australia that night overall, I believe. Yes. <laughs> so how, no, did that I, go, I, how did that go down with the other Aussies then, Roy? Did they have oh, anything they, to Don't worry. They, look, they, they've always given me flack, um, yeah. always given me flack about it. Yeah. But it was funny. It was really, really funny when I first rode in the British final. Mm-hmm. I had that many <laughs> messages from Aussie riders. Yeah. Saying, go and kick ass, go and win it. <laughs> so, yeah, look, so they like to, yeah. it's the water off a duck's back to me. I, you know, it many riders have done it in the past. Major Brigo, oh, yeah, exactly, you know, yeah, they all did British finals then, didn't they? They all did them. It, it, it's, it's not something that <laughs> so I didn't lose sleep over, you know, oh, oh you're a pom now, is it? Never said I was yeah. a pom, but I tell you what. <laughs> If I win the British Championship, which I did, I was quite yeah. proud to do it. Um, yeah. One of the, one of the most oldest championships in the world. So, mm. um, uh, yeah, look, it, it, it was a funny time, but no, yeah. don't regret it. As in, don't regret riding the British final. Don't regret riding for Britain in that meeting. Um, regret probably not leaving my hat in the ring for Australia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, when when you when you feel like you've been cut pretty deep but it, it hurts for a long time yeah yeah i get you uh i just uh roscoe's normally in here as well so it'd be interesting if he has coming in uh floppy um another buddy uh, another top brother from another mother mr floppy just put uh did you have brian anderson engines in that good year with bomber uh no i didn't i had peter john's engines oh. and uh it's a funny one that year because that year uh, was it that year or was it year after they we just changed over to the new silencers I believe um, yeah, and loads yeah, of people yeah. were having issues you know trying yeah, to get the setups right, yeah. yeah trying to get the setups right mm. and I ended up using engines that were five years old and okay. we had Johnsy worked on some in, I worked on some cams and he just said we'll put those in and see what it does and the things were rocket ships and I lent I lent one to Bomber one night. And I think he maxed out at Peterborough and he got hold of one from a guy down south, which was a sister engine to what I had. And he used that in the Grand Prix for the remainder of the year and, and you know, finished the season really, really strong. Um, but that year I was, I was and have been on Johnsy's stuff for, I would say, 90% of my career. Yeah. Uh, I think I did one I did one or two years where I had some Flemings. Yeah. Um but uh, yeah, I'd say ninety percent of my career have, have always been PJR, uh, PJ, mm-hmm. PJR. So. Yeah, mm, interesting. That's why. Oh, he's just said as well. Uh, hi, sorry, hi, Lee and uh, Rory. Just diving in to say hi. And that Rory, one of the nicest guys, awesome style, and never forget Rory and Bomber's engine sounding like two strokes and being super quick in the late two thousands. <laughs> well, if they weren't if they weren't doing 13, 13,000 RPM, I weren't happy. <laughs> <laughs> Rev it right out. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. Brilliant. I love that. Have you had, like, did you, I've spoke to quite a lot of the riders on the in these interviews and they say they have nicknames for engines and things like that and favourites and all that. Did you, have you do all that sort of thing or? I did. I did for a long time. I used to name them after, I had, um, I had two engines named after Sesame Street characters, Bert and Ernie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had, I had engines named after Star Wars characters. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I ended up actually started naming engines after people who I, whether I bought them from or, um, uh, the, say someone who'd won a championship that year, I'd, I'd name it after them. Um, so yeah, um, I bought an engine off, um, Lewis Bridger and I oh. called it, I called, I called it Louie. <laughs> yeah, I, I called it just because it, it was brand new. It only done eight means or something. I, I you know, I, I said, oh, I'll have it. And I ended up calling it Louie. Um, <laughs> so, cool. yeah, um, uh, I, I called one Spanker because it was spanking brand new. 
so, so it looked, you know, and I called it Spain. Yeah. So some some were some some were random, some were some were just normal. I was going to say to Floppy as well, Floppy, you need to watch some of this back that you've missed tonight because there's some bloody good ideas that Rory's come up about the GP and that you should uh, <laughs> watch it back. I know he likes watching them back and stuff, so you should check that out for sure. Uh, Floppy, so had, you always been, Floppy had a great style, mate. He had mm, a fantastic style. Look, look great on a bike. Sometimes it didn't look like he was working hard enough, but that was just because mm. of his style. Mm. Um, and uh, is uh, some races around Eastbourne. I used to get frustrated because some days I'd go there and I'd, I'd throw everything at Eastbourne. He'd come into turn one like it was he was on a Sunday ride, get it turned, and then you know pull pull lengths on you coming off turn two. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, Eastbourne I always thought I was glad to get away from there. <laughs> yeah, even if you scored well, you had to get away. They had some proper track specialists as well. They were awesome, as we know, like Dugar, yeah, yeah. Floppy, Jesus. They were a different level down there, weren't they? For sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, just got Maureen Schooling come on. I know she's uh, living in Aussie. And she just put, uh, she always uh, uh, has a chat with me as well. She's put top of the video. Really enjoyed watching in Greece. Some very good ideas from Rory. Uh, give Speedway a better look and more exciting fans to watch and new challenges for riders. Excellent. And the people in charge should listen and take on board. <laughs> Knowing Rory from a young age and juniors and being there for his first senior races, I likened him to Jason Crump with the goal to race and the best riders in the world of Speedway. The passion in them was on fire. Proud of all they have you have. Yeah. Uh, mm. Maureen has known me since I was probably 11, 12. Yeah. Um, she used to supply me with helmet colours for yeah. quite a long time. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like that's like a lot of people, especially from the Simewind, wind. It's like when that's where you know started off in Darwin. Obviously, they moved to Adelaide. Um, but yeah, still re remember them years fondly. My nephew now, but obviously Blake is racing there. You know, obviously at Mildura and Simewinders. Winders. Yeah, uh, I believe Maureen still does helmet colours. Sorry, Maureen, does, I, don't, yeah. I do apologise. I don't get your helmet colours anymore. But um, uh, I, I go for for the cheap and cheerful down shirts ones here, where I can get them straight off of, off of Bellum. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, never know. I might put in a call. I might get some for this year for next year. Here we go, Maureen. Get hold of him. <laughs> but she sent me a load of stickers, and they're awesome. All these stickers uh, I've got, and I'm going to stiff them on my uh, van I've just had as well. So yeah, I believe cool I've actually one of them stickers is on my. Bench here in England, I think. Uh, I think yeah. the stickers of it's of Lee, isn't it? It's of Lee, and it's got more in schooling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said one of them. Yeah, yeah. I still remember yeah. that. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, they're cool. Nice. Thanks for coming on, Maureen. Um, on the technical side of stuff, then, have you always been into that side of things, then, Rory? I mean, you said that you do your bikes and stuff like that. Have, have you had like good relationships with mechanics, or have you just done things more on your own later on, or? Um, I, I've been pretty lucky with mechanics. I've had some really, really good lads that have worked for me in the past. Um, uh, uh, some of them have moved on to, to, to even better and bigger things, you know, after me. Um, so I, I, I was lucky, you know, to have some really good mechanics. Um, trustworthy ones as well. I think any speedway rider will tell you that is a big thing when it comes to um, – trusting the guy that's doing your chains, doing your engines and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. And I, I was very lucky to have some some really good guys. Um, the technical side of things, you know, engine-wise, yeah. mate, I'm not an engine tuner, never said I was or, you know, <laughs> tried to pretend to be one. Yeah. Always was interested in what Johnsy was doing and 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 still am. Um, you know, a lot of the new stuff he's doing and, and uh, how the sport has evolved. Has uh, in my sense of the way the engines have gone, do I believe it's been beneficial to the sport? I don't think so. I think the way the engines are now developed, mm -hmm. you cannot run on grippy tracks anymore. Mm -hmm. And I know fans don't like hearing this, but the bikes, these engines are not designed to run on grippy tracks. They, they're not. They 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 are dangerous when they're when the tracks are grippy. Yeah. Um, so for me, you know, the way they are designed, they have to be like that, or they have to be on the on on the top end. Um, yeah. As soon as you get off that button, they want to go right, or they want to go yeah. skyways. Um, yeah. 
they are really difficult to ride these days. Mm-hmm. And it frustrates me, really, when I see former riders, oh, back in the day, oh, you know, when I raced, they did not ridden these engines on on some of the conditions that are like uh, questionable for, for the engines. Mm. Now, if I had an engine from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, on, on a grippy track, wouldn't complain, wouldn't moan, wouldn't I'd just go out there and do it because you had so much more power through the range of the engine. You could yeah. use so much more throttle. These things don't – they don't do that. Mm. The, the, the days of, you know – People who are really good at it, Darcy Ward, Lee Adams, who were able to use the throttle, use a lot of range of the throttle to get the the, the bike to grip. That don't exist no more. Yeah. Throttle control is is a rarity um, in in modern day youth speedway. There's very few. They got Robert Lambert's good at it. Buley's good at it. You look at Smarslik, fantastic at it. But then you see a lot of these other guys. They they're just like that. Nah. Yeah. You know. Anyone can do that on a slick track. Yeah. 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 What I'm saying, anyone can do that. With four riders, it's different. But, I mean, that's that's how they have to ride these things now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see a lot of Polish juniors. They come on so quick, but the only way they're taught is yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. all the way around. Yeah. And you can see as well, like, even on these temporary tracks, sometimes you get the odd ruts here and there. We saw I was Mate. literally trackside by the pits when Woofy yeah. caught that rut this year and just literally like see you later gone it's frightening when they go they don't even people like smarzik when they go they'll okay. take him for a ride um and yeah they they can they're frightening frightening machines when they when they're out of control oh, for sure yeah definitely are um any weird superstitions rory <laughs> uh it's, yes it's um yeah, but as well yeah, I, I, okay, you'd call them that. The first one was you don't shave on race day. Oh, right, okay. Or you don't clip or shave. Well, I mean, you don't you do not do anything, fade, you know, you don't do anything on race day. Yeah. And I always, when I got changed, my left boot went on first, my left knee brace went on first, and I always left, always for some reason, always sort of, I, majority of the time leave my left glove on. Uh, and the funny thing was, my dad used to leave, always used to leave his right glove on. No way. Yeah, a bit of a weird one, but yeah, just that, that would be probably the, the only two that I'd, I'd superstition wise. So still do that to today then? Yeah, probably not so much this year because I was working a lot on the bikes myself, so I didn't want to get my gloves dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you so you work a lot on the bikes now then? I well this year I had, yeah I had to um, and um, uh, did a lot of like the bike cleaning and all that sort of uh, by myself. A few guys helped me out when I was really really busy, um, but yeah it, it it got a bit of a grind towards the end. Um, so <laughs> the uh, Jake Rose who's sort of. Uh, doing some of my bikes at the minute. <laughs> yeah. He stripped some of my bikes down and he says, this is unacceptable, uh, the <laughs> state they are in. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, <laughs> I said, that's why I'm paying you to clean them up now. <laughs> yeah, get them back into shape. <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, I was going to ask you if you had any, uh, uh, you mentioned a couple, of, is there any other major, is there any sort of major regrets in any way of... Uh, maybe riding for certain teams at certain times, a few decisions here and there? Um, probably in Poland. I, I I wish I had another crack at the extra league. Um, I'm trying to know what year that was. I won't mention the club name, but I was offered an extra league spot one year. Um, very, very, very good deal. Um, yeah. But it was a large squad. They put a they put a large squad together. It was the biggest squad in all the teams. Yeah. Um, there was like six foreigners racing for three spots, and I just thought, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to have to go to Poland. I was at a stage in my career where I didn't. I I felt like I, I shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, I was at this. I was thought, you know what? 
I was offered some good deals in the division below where I knew I'd be in the team every week, know I'd be earning money, and I just went, nah, I'm not doing it. I, I, I went to when I stayed in the first division league and went to a club. Um, I probably wish I'd probably gone to the extra league that year because I think I would have probably done all right. Um, and where my career would have gone from there, I don't know. But probably that that is the only one, as in something I'd probably look back on and say, no, I'd probably I'd gone the other way. Mm. Just been thinking in my head now. I've been thinking of all the riders that have just been randomly going in my head about the GP, and I'm thinking, you've got to be the best rider ever that's not been in the GP. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that. Um, I think I think Gregory, Le- Gregory Laguda... I think yeah, Mike Barr should have been in the Grand Prix. Um, uh, probably could probably beat half the lineup in the league now. In that, I, I well, yeah, my opinion, yeah. that's my view. Yeah. Um, and he's blockbuster. Um, yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> I would say um, who else? Oh, that's a toughie. Laguna's definitely up there. Um, mm. Tuffy, that one. I probably, I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably have to do a bit of research, but yeah, Laguna is, yeah, is definitely one. Um, You're uh, one. That's, there'd be a few out there. I, I think I, I, I wish I'd got a chance, even if it was one year. I wish I'd got a chance to, to have a crack at it. Um, you know, uh, you look at the, the look, you look at the chance Martin Slominski got. Yeah, you know yeah. he can he can go he can go and finish his racing career and he won a Grand Prix. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. people might not. He actually I think he qualified that year. He he earned to be there that year. I think um, so and deserved to be there. Uh, you'd probably say was he one of the world's best riders that year? Maybe not, but he 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 deserved to be there. Yeah, you know. Um, you know, he, he's not like your big names, like your Zagars, your, your Bjarni Pedersons, your, your Freddie Lingrid. You know, he, he wasn't one of them statured riders. But he, he qualified and, and deserved to beat it. I could, uh, if I was given free free reign, I think I could take probably quarter of the field out, um, being honest. I could probably you would have the Laguta brothers. I'd love to see Emil in it. Uh, I'd get you in it I, as well. Matt, oh no, no. <laughs> um, if they would allow me to roll, yeah, and get away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the pits, yeah. <laughs> if they, if all this, all this nonsense of, of restarts and that, you know, um, yeah, I might be within a sniff. Um, <laughs> but, mate, uh, Gregory Laguta, Artem Laguta should definitely be back in. Look, I won't go into why they're not in or they should deserve it or what I'm, I'm saying them to especially this year emil was the best rider in the world yeah he was brilliant yeah it's a shame I, he's not in it. i'm not saying smart league's not the but i'm saying in the leagues and the way emil rode this year in my opinion he was the best rider in the world mm. um and i think he would be the only one right now i don't know if lucusa because he wasn't that sharp this year, I wouldn't say he was as dominant as what he has previously. Yeah. But Emil, for me, would be the yeah. only guy right now, in my eyes, he's the only guy who can match his pace. Yeah. You could push him, yeah. I, that's, that's what's kind of I, in your head right now. It feels like who's yeah. who's going to push him next year? I was just... There are other riders that can be as quick as him, but to do it Over every round, yeah. you know, I've seen Doily be quick. I've seen Jack be quick. Yeah, Freddie Jack. be quick. Yeah. Um, Vasulik shown signs of being like Vasulik ended up on the box at the end of the year. Yeah, Beauty's but been winning. They, the they not, they're not at. They, they don't have that um, armor, or there's that the armory to say I can do that every round. Smarzik does it every round, even on his off nights. He's still, he's still so far. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, and I just think Emil's the only one who can, or would be able to do that. And, you know, for whatever reasons why that 
they're not being allowed to ride or they're choosing not i i, um, I don't know yeah, um, I don't but the speedway the speedway world is being robbed either which way yeah they definitely need to be in it to me it's not the best riders in it at the moment as it stands so no no a bit frustrating like you said when they announced the the wild cars and all that ready for the next for the new year you're kind of almost like oh, oh it's easy climate you just oh. yeah, yeah, yeah literally it was yeah, a kind that, of a same old thing sort of and I can I can only guarantee you, I, I would say eighty percent of Speedway fans would have that same uh oh, yeah. something yeah. fresh, something new. Come on. Yeah, I think you're right yeah. there. Uh is there any special uh, memorable races um or even meetings that just still in the memory all the time that obviously the, the Elite League Riders Championship was was, was good. Um I have fond memories of a few meetings in Poland where I think uh, I rode at Ostrov. Uh, I was riding for Grudzins. I rode at Ostrov and got paid 20 there out of 21. And then I did another night where at Woods I got 20 out of 21. Um, that's pretty pretty hard to do in Poland. Um, and uh, they, they were pretty special, um, I would say. Riding around Cardiff on my own in front of 40,000 people was pretty special. Not many people know that. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, uh, I had the opportunity to do some demo laps at Cardiff one year when Wales was in the Euro finals, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they, uh, they put big screens up, obviously, and they allowed all the Wales fan, uh, Welsh fans go in and watch it. Um, and it was a couple of weeks before Cardiff and they had the track down or, and, um, they rang me up and said, would you mind doing it? And I said, yeah, why not? I might not ever get a chance to ride Cardiff. So I, while I was there, while I was warming up and getting changed, I spoke to one of the managers of, of the stadium. I said, look, do you have a Welsh football top? And he said, why? I said, I'll wear it. And it was, it was quite – it was weird. I went out and when I had the Welsh football top on, the, the crowd went absolutely insane. Did they? It was, it was pretty <laughs> – it was, it. it was really cool. It was really um, cool, actually. Yeah, I didn't ever knew that. I never heard of that one. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. Well, who's, uh, who was your closest friends over your Speedway career? Who's been your closest friends? Um, oh, Tuffy. Uh, I'm pretty pretty close with with Sam, um, Danny. Obviously, I, I told you that. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it, it's hard to be close. Like, and I mean, when I say close yeah. mates, it's hard. Like where you say your best mate, because um, you end up racing against each other. And there have been occasions where you know, um, me and Sam have had some ding dongs and. Um, same as Danny, you know, like we joke about it now. There's an incident where me and Sam, I, me and Sam got hooked up in the back straight pool and he ended up on the dog track. Um, yeah. and, and, uh, it, it wasn't anyone's fault. He got hooked up in my race jacket and I pulled him off the bike and it sent him through the fence. Um, the Danny King incident, well, we argue to this day whose fault it was. And, uh, <laughs> he's, he's realized now that he won't admit <laughs> That it was his fault. Um, <laughs> it was his fault. He went over the fence. I went through the fence. But he said, yeah. he said, I left a gap. I think he tried to make a gap, but <laughs> um, he's, he sent me some funny videos over over, over the time where this race keep that that race keeps popping up on rerun or well, online or something. Yeah, and he yeah. sent me one while I was back in Australia, and it was of that race, and it was. It was one of the most funniest video messages, he, and he was on him, and he said, he says, see, I told you you left me room, and then he points it out to the TV screen, and it's me and him going through the fence at a million mile an hour. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I I, you look, I'd say Sam and and and, um, and Danny. Dougie, I get on really well with. have got a lot of time for, for Dougie. Um, and uh, so, yeah, uh, funnily enough, all three are invited to my wedding next year, so. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So you can say—is he allowed to say his jokes at the? Uh... <laughs> no, nah, uh, none of them are getting on the mic. No, uh, they're not. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant! Any funny stories you're allowed to tell us? Uh, allowed to tell us? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got a few. Um, I 
I accidentally, sorry, my partner accidentally put my passport through the wash. Oh. And I had to fly to Sweden the, the following day. Uh, I sort of, how should I say, when I say I snuck in, I talked my way into Sweden with a damaged passport, was hardly recognised. Uh, but then on the way in the return back into England, um, I ended up going into the white room for about six hours. No way. Yeah. Um, I was, I got down to my underwear in Poland. I was wrongly, uh, wrongly identified or whatever it is. Uh, they thought I was someone else. They thought I was a, a, a well, a drug trafficker. They thought I had drugs on me in Poland. Yeah. I got stuck in a, another white room for, for about five hours. They had to ring my boss at Ostrov to let me out because I was racing that day. Uh, and I got down to my underwear that day. Um, I was waiting for the, I was waiting for the rubber glove, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, there, there are a few funny stories. Um, there's probably loads. I probably, probably, yeah. Uh, some I can, like I said, talk about some I can't. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's probably plenty that you can't uh, say. Uh, this is interesting as well. Rory, what's Rory's opinion on the electronic random start system that they're using in the GPs that's going to be used in the leagues this year? Is that, are they using that in the league this year, are they? I, I believe so. I believe that's going oh, to be right. brought in. I'm, interesting. I, I'm, yeah, I, well, I think that takes – what that takes out of it, it takes um, – it takes the power out of the referee, and I know that sounds weird, but it takes like some. There are referees that like to hold the tapes because they like catching riders mm. rolling and touching tapes, mm. and that's just that's known with within all the riders. Um, there are certain referees you just you know, oh God, I'm going to have to put in some new clutch plates after tonight because these things are going to be cooked by the end of the night, you know. Yeah. And look. Uh, that's common knowledge. So yeah. um, I think that takes that out of it. But I just hope it's not like you stood there for five seconds, still waiting for this machine to let you go. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with the starting process before. You, they rave on about you know, oh, it takes real, you know, people rolling and stuff like that. I think if you roll and you get an advantage, yes, restart it. If you try and jump it, anticipate it, and don't get an advantage, don't pull it back. No, play on. Play on. I don't. I don't get why these referees think they. Oh, we got to. Even though they're last in the first corner, the referees stop the race, which is the most stu stupidest rule. Yeah, gives them a second chance. They've, they've even though they're it. last in the first corner, the referee will stop the race. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I can't get my head around that rule. I really don't. Then they make it. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Then they make the. Then they make. Yeah, yeah, they could make a good start the next one. Yeah. Chance. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, quite a lot of the riders have said as well, especially from sort of like the older times, that they used to have a lot of fun in games with obviously, you know, I know maybe not the whole when they used to run them right over and then come back over and all that, but used to be a bit more um, fun in games at the start and then it would sort of interest people and stuff like that as well. Someone yeah. Mentioned it. Um, see, I, sure. I, I, I was very, very clever when it comes to before the, the new rules came in, I was very clever. I, you know, I openly admitted, and and like people like Lee Richardson was quite a common offender. Um, if you roll and you get caught, you get caught. But I think the art of starting was part of that. Mm. You know, they say that like in the sprint races for for runners, they got sensor pads now on on the. On their starting blocks, I believe. Blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, obviously yeah. the start, you know, like you may move, but you've not left the block. You know, if you start getting that, I believe there's the, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an old school rider, so I, I feel that starting now, if you want to go, if you want to make it even Stevens for everyone, concrete starts. And then we'll find out who the best gators are. Yeah, no ruts, no nothing. No, exactly. Concrete yeah. starts, and I and you know what? I'd I'd be all for it. Mm. Cycle speedway style. <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd be all for it. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I remember Hans Anderson's got it down to an art of rolling as well. He always used to just do that tiny little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I remembered him doing it loads at Swindon when he rode for Swindon. I used to get frustrated with Lee at Lakeside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there was, oh, I'd be in gate three, be off four. And I, I'd say, I, I'd want to look up at the referee and go, are you watching this? <laughs> I, I I I'd be rolling at, at the same time. Like I'd be trying because I knew if I didn't roll, yeah, you got no I didn't. There. I didn't. I didn't stand a chance against Lee because he was yeah. such a good gator. Yeah, you um, I, I would. Have, okay, Lee started rolling. Oh, I'm going as well. Um, <laughs> but that was that was sort of the attitude. You know, my upbringing in the sport. You know, you were looking for them advantages. Now it's hard to. I'm not saying get away with the advantage or, you know, get away with jumping the start. Now, jumping the start and rolling are two different things because when you're rolling, you've not jumped the start because you're still behind the tapes. Yeah. And But the rule states you must be stationary. Mm. I get that. I understand that. that. That rule is black and white. Mm. But you have not jumped the start. Yeah. So the rule contradicts itself. You've not mm. jumped the start, but you're not stationary. So... I think that rule needs to be changed in, in a way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Marty Clyde put Thorpe, he was notorious for his starts. <laughs> Paul Thorpe, I raced against Old Thorpe, Thorpe, yeah. yeah. He, Thorpe. He, uh, he could trap, he could trap. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he could, uh, he was that he could start, wasn't he? There's always been a few, but like you said, they've all got their little tricks. Do the riders still, do they do much of that anymore? You know, where they used to try and get you into the tapes, do the little movement on a hand or anything like that, where you're looking from two across I've one or three across four? I've never done that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't remember who did it. I know someone did it. Classic, um, someone did it at Bellevue, the old Bellevue. Yeah. And, uh, and it what because everyone wanted gate four at Bellevue. Um, I can't remember who it was, but they they were off gate three and they deliberately uh, the green light as soon as green light come on they went I can't remember who it was they went through the tapes but it forced um, I don't know if it was bomber a forced bomber off gate three off four onto gate three <laughs> so and that guy went off gate four and then ended up getting a good run and ended up going around everyone and got a paid win I can't I can't even remember I think it might have been Waddy. Might have been David Watt. Oh, um, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, um, there, there, there are some little games that still go on, um, but probably not as, you know, as often as, as as what it used to be. I don't know if there's any more managers still left on the line, but I was going to ask you who has been your best team manager. <laughs> um, Pete no, Adams. Pete, Pete, yeah. Pete Adams by far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, had a great working relationship with him. Thought he was great man manager. Um, enjoyed working with Rob Lyon as well. Rob Lyon was 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 good. Um, but yeah, Pete just I, I just we we just got each other. Um, and uh, you know I'm still recover. I'm 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 still recovering from my c constant concussion every every week where he'd make me look one direction and slap me in the back of the head in the, in, in the other. Um, I don't know why I kept falling for it, but I would every week. Don't know. <laughs> Everyone was impressed with my. I had a selfie with him. <laughs> Got him to have a selfie in the uh, Cardiff pits this year. And he was he smiling? Proper, proper smile. Was he That's smiling? I, I, good. Was. I was like, how did you do that? <laughs> I said I didn't do anything. Yeah, oh, yeah that was classic. Um, if you were, if I have to push you on it, who would you say? This is going to be a difficult one. Uh, would you say is the best three riders that you've ever competed against in your career? Darcy Ward, Emil, and Jason Crump. Three class riders. Yeah, I, I just think just because Darcy was so naturally talented, some of the things I've seen him do on a bike, unexplainable. Crumpy, his animal like riding style just made sometimes a bike shouldn't have gone that fast, but he made it go that fast. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, them three for me, I think, you know, I think they, they just the names speak enough, really. We saw 
obviously we got to see him closer. Uh, Darcy rode for Swindon in that last year uh, that he did in the British League. And my God, I think he'd just gone on that thing where he was sorted right out. You could see everything in his head. He was getting the fitness and he, he had everything was absolutely bang on. And he was like different gravy to another level that year. Jesus. I spoke to him the weekend, uh, I think it was the, maybe the Friday before he had his accident. He was at yeah. Coventry, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. And uh, I had a quick chat with him in the pits before the meeting and he, he told me some things that he changed and some things that he, you know, worked out mm. and uh, on his time off. Um, and I, I, I walked away watching him that night and I obviously already watched him. Mm. I said, the GP's in trouble next year. Yeah. That was, that was my view. I said, it, yeah. I know what happened happened, but yeah. if it didn't, Smarslick wouldn't be a three-time, four-time world champion. I don't think he would be. I don't, not saying he wouldn't be a world champion, but I'm saying he wouldn't have as many world championships as he does now. No. Again, my, my, my view, my opinion, but, yeah, yeah I think uh, I think Darcy would have, would have reined him in. Yeah, we were so lucky to see him that year that he did at Swindon before it happened. He was absolutely on another level. He was literally taking the piss, to be fair. <laughs> and he was yeah. team riding like you were talking about earlier, like some of the riders that were, you know, like reserve type riders and, was, you know, getting them to do five ones was mental. Yeah. Yeah, unbelievable. 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 Um, I'll ask you a couple more for you, go. I do appreciate your time, mate. I've really enjoyed it as well. It's been awesome. Yeah. Um, if you could give any advice to any youngsters out there that would like to become a pro speeder rider, what would you say to those guys? Obviously, you've already worked with the youth as well, so you must be getting these. Speedway is a ruthless sport. Mm. And I know this sounds weird and, and it may come across a little bit arrogant, but just because of what I've gone through and what I've known other riders to go through, Always look after number one mm. because you're a usable commodity as a rider. You can have a stellar season, as we were talking earlier, and the promoter, not at his own, um, you know, he may want to keep you, but he might not have a choice and may have to get rid of you. Um, and unfortunately, you have to you, – we earn – we ride for a team, but individually we earn points individually. Yeah. And if you want to be successful, you've got to be, have a bit of dog in you. You've got to have a bit of killer in you. Yeah. Um, I know he gets a lot of flack. He's not one of my favourite guys, but I'll tell you what, Nicky pedersen has got plenty of dog in him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, mate, I, saying he wasn't a team – Rider is a bit harsh, but I don't think you know. Nicky scored fifteen and the team didn't win. I know when he'd open up his bank balance, he'd be like, "I'm all right." Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that may sound a little bit harsh, but that's that that's the the bottom end of it. Um, yeah. Promoters will be like, "He's got a ten point average. I want him." You know that. That's how they look at it. They don't yeah. look at it. Oh, he's got a great smile. Oh, he looks good. He looks good on a bike, but he doesn't score anything. They don't look like that. They do not. No. They, they don't. That's not how they operate. Yeah. Um, you know, even with sponsors, mate, be 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 killer with it. Be you know, look after your sponsors. You know, don't let people get their feet under the door. You know, I've seen it. It's happened to me. Um, yeah. And and you know. Because you are it, you're your own team. I know you ride for teams, but at the same time, you're your own team. Yeah, yeah. I even uh, was lucky enough to see Barry Briggs at this uh, reunion thing for Swindon. Did a bit of a live uh, interview thing with him outside, and he was, he said to me the same thing as well. Is about, you know, he, he wasn't a great team rider, but he always looked after himself, like number one, and that was it, pretty much. And yeah, like you said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Ivan Major, oh, I say no more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, that, and yeah. that's not that. And please, I'm not being oh, negative no. on Ivan. Been, like, but on the job Ivan, the Ivan had a mentality of winning. Mm -hmm. You know, he had beaten half his rivals. I'd even say some of his teammates were intimidated just riding with him. Yeah. Um, you know, I spent quite a bit of time with Ivan when when I was younger. You know, with his time in Australia. Um, and I'd heard stories about other riders and, and stuff like that, mate. He was he was killer. He was absolutely ruthless when it came to winning and being who he was. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure he was, wasn't he? Uh, any sponsors you want to shout out or anything? Let me put this out there. And see. Um, I've, I've had some great sponsors over the years, but the guys that are with me now, um, ATPI in, uh, Dave Parry from Parry's International, Rock Oil, uh, um, uh, if I've forgotten anyone, um, Tracy, uh, Tracy Mills, um, uh, First Glass. Uh, you put me on the spot now. Um, <laughs> I've still got transport in my brain. Up. Um, get the bike covers up here. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so my, the main ones, so obviously, um, uh, Rich has been helping me out recently with with a lot of the um, the GB youth stuff, you know, and but he helps me out with vans and stuff like that. So um, NGK uh, and um, yeah, obviously, my biggest supporters, mate, is my family. Yeah. So um, I know with sponsors we don't go racing, but um, I don't go just, racing without supporting my family. So, hang on a minute. He's just put who's, who's this? <laughs> Hurry up, uh, Rory. Uh, winking frogs calling. <laughs> who's that? That's, that's either that. <laughs> I reckon that's. Um, I think that's Chris Adams. Oh, is it? <laughs> I think that's Chris Adams. I think. <laughs> I do think that's Chris Adams. I might be wrong, but there's only there's there's a very limited amount of people who knows what the the uh, right, the, okay, yeah. <laughs> the winking this frog is. This has got to be a private job. Private job. Yeah. yeah. Is there any other? Is there any other sports that you enjoy watching? Other than uh, well, I I love me Supercross. I'm I'm mad into football as well. You got to be if you live here in the UK. Um, yeah, of course. Any motorsport, really, but yeah, probably supercross and football. They're the two main ones. Yeah. What do you think about these electric bikes that are all coming into like motocross and? <laughs> oh, I can't. I have, I haven't got a sick bucket next to me, mate. I can't think about things like that. And, oh, mate! I... Please, I look. I just. I'm. I'm not a fan of electric cars. I'm not a fan of electric bikes. I'm not. It's motorsport. You might say it's, oh, it's still a motor. It's electric motorsport. Burning fuel, the noise. I'm sorry, you don't replace that. I that Formula E. I'm sorry. Yeah, just put a put someone playing uh, solitaire on the TV. I'd get more enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, that's classic. Honestly, I. I had a um, a motocross event I did not long ago uh, in Cornwall, and they had a brand new one there. And uh, I know the guy as well. And uh, pff, so weird, just goes by, and I've took some photos of some at a practice day as well, and they just go by doing mm. that. It's like, the yeah, fuck? yeah, it's weird. that's oh, it. Nah. You know, the chain chattering and all that is like, wow. Oh God. No. I tell you what, in Poland, you'd probably hear you'd probably hear the rider fart on the start line if if, <laughs> if, the, if they went down like that. <laughs> oh, they're so bad, aren't they? It's not not for me. Uh, hopefully, I'm not around when they're all in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Smell, noise, uh, etc. Yeah. As as you know, uh, hence mm. people need to see Speedway in in live. So yeah. I always tell people that you watch on the TV, it doesn't do it justice either. So no. people get yourselves down to your local track and uh, see these guys in action. Thanks so much for your time, Rory. What a legend you are. Uh, really enjoyed your career to date. And uh, what's the plan then? Are you, is, are you just all just going to keep it going now? And... Uh, are you racing wise, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm taking it year by year, mate. Oh, so year by year. <laughs> See how it is. Uh, I did. I did hurt my. I hurt me knee this year. Um, in the crash at Oxford. Oh, so uh, um, yeah. Uh, and and damaged it again at Berwick. Um, so that's something I got to look at. Uh, so I, I'm investing in some new knee braces for next year. So, um, but yeah, like I'm, both my knees will need doing. Um, I had my shoulder repaired while I was back in Australia. My other shoulder probably needs doing as well. Um, obviously, then got my back back issues, which I've been told by four different surgeons that I will require further surgery as years roll on. Uh, but yeah, but for me, look, I'm I'm okay now. I'm fit. I'm healthy. Um, we just take it year by year. Yeah, and when just before we go. Uh... <laughs> 
Is this, uh, you said you're going to make some special changes for Beric. Is this, uh... <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? what you, do you know what? I see uh, you sent that to me the other day, yeah, and yeah. I, I'm like, I had to look it, and I went, That's... Was it me? <laughs> no, Was I did. I, I can't. I'm either blank this out because it's that Scunthorpe, isn't it? And I don't yeah, know what right. it. I don't. I, I don't remember doing it. <laughs> I don't oh, remember really, doing it, it and that, that worries me because I don't remember doing it. <laughs> oh, that's your name, Andrew. I thought is that it's, him? Cause it's not. That's not even my helmet. I've never had mm. a laser. I don't think I've ever owned a laser helmet. <laughs> I don't, yeah. That, that, that really, it really oh. threw me that. I went, <laughs> it is me. Well, I've just ruined oh, myself, yeah. yeah. I might have ruined so, myself. Ro 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 Rob Godfrey must have been paying a good good, good fee that day. That's why I was there. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, this will be recorded on my YouTube, and I'll share it out there um, and let everyone see it back. It's uh, been really cool as well. Really enjoyed it. Nice one. Good luck for the season, and uh, we might even see you in the uh, Premiership as well, maybe. That, yeah, then. Maybe. Who knows? We'll wait and see. But, yeah, thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed it. No, much appreciated, Roy. Thank you, mate. Take it easy, buddy. Take it easy, buddy. Bye. Cheers, Roy. Thanks, mate. Ledge. Beautiful. Really enjoyed that. Really cool. Could have gone on for hours. Could have gone on for another few hours. Three hours with Roy Schlein. Flew by like that. Let's get a couple of uh, these pictures. I didn't even get up that. Mentioned that he won the four Scottish championships. Always liked Rory. He's always had that bit of determination and edge and gets stuck in. And you can see it always. He's always passionate about his racing. Always gets, always does his best for his clubs. You can see that he's fully into it. I've always liked that passion side of Rory and always been a good rider. Always killed us at Swindon. I'm not even bitter about it. <laughs> Uh, when you mentioned the Coventry stuff, is that they've absolutely killed us? And like I said, that's why I asked him about uh, if Swindon come knocking. Surely, uh, if you would come knocking the way he rode Swindon, he killed us. But uh, ah, thank you, mine. Very enjoyable with the man, wasn't it? Thanks for coming on again, Barney. You absolute ledge. Saw my buddy come on as well. Saw Maureen tonight as well. That was cool. And I just said to her, I'm going to be putting them on my van when I get all the vans sorted out ready. And we've got some beautiful stickers off Maureen. I'm going to get on there. Legendary Floppy. See, another rider. Floppy was on here. Slory Slime saying how good you were. And the style. Do tell you this. <laughs> Sounds better coming from these guys. <laughs> Be cool to get Colin Richardson on as well. I spoke to him a couple of times. Uh, Going to get him on. I think he said he's, he's somewhere like working in India or something like that, I think he said to me. And then he's going back to Dubai, and then we're going to sort it out. Who else can we get from Reading, Matt? I <laughs> uh, want to get Amanda Castagno on. Um, I'm going to chase him up again. That just reminds me. I'm going to message him now, actually, while I'm thinking about it, and tell him to watch this interview if he wants to get any ideas for the GP. <laughs> and hopefully not get myself in too much trouble. <laughs> Oh. Classic, eh? I've got, I got a message, Amanda Castagna. I want to get him on. I used to love him. He was flamboyant. I mean, Rory talks about a bit of flamboyancy. He had definitely had some flamboyancy. And uh, Paco Castagna is definitely carrying on that, isn't he? Uh, you should definitely check out my Paco Castagna interview because I uh, got to surprise him with his hero, uh, 10 times world motocross champion, Stefan Everts, as well. And his reaction is pucker. Even if you go on there and go, go to the bit, it's about halfway through. It's absolutely priceless. And then when Stefan Evans goes off the screen, well, he thinks he goes off the screen. He comes down into the bottom of my screen. He saw his reaction. It was brilliant. <laughs> you should watch it. Paco, as we know, is a great character as well, and he's uh, doing well. Thanks, Barney. Uh, thanks for coming. I do appreciate when you come on, buddy. Yes, it'd be good to... I'm going to get myself down to... Who, who goes and watches at the Barrett Bandit Center? Have you been up there, Barney? I want to watch that. I want to go and watch that track live. I don't believe I've been there. I don't know if I did when I was young, sir, but then that would have probably been a different Berwick, wouldn't it? Um, but I do like the look of that banking and all that in that last corner and stuff like that. I reckon that would be really cool to go and watch that live. 
I think I'm going to have to get out there next season at some point. It's going to be a long way, I'm sure, but uh, maybe I can find some Speedway friends up there to hang out with. Go because I was speaking to Chris Louis the other day as well. I'm going to because I'm going to get him on. I uh, did one with him and Jeremy Doncaster together, but I'm going to do one with him on his own, Louis. Um, and uh, speaking to him, saying I was supposed to go up to Ipswich this year, he said I could when I went. He come to my reunion two in 2022, and he said I should come up. I'm going to hopefully uh, stay with uh, Dewey Hair and uh, going to meet up with the Hair Boys. Rifle through all of Lawrence Hare's uh, memorabilia is the plan. <laughs> We've got to sort that out, boys. We keep talking about it, don't we? We've got to sort that out. Jeremy Doncaster said he'd come and we'd go and uh, believe it or not. I can't believe I'd say that. Though. I'd actually have a, I would have, actually have a curry now, which is bizarre for me. I don't even like English food. Let me know. <laughs> but yeah, I do actually eat curry now. So <laughs> only mild, obviously. But uh, yeah, so... Um, Giving you the updates. Uh, like I said, I've got that competition going for this uh, Ryan Villapoto legendary uh, Supercross and and uh, Motocross uh, champion in America. He's come over and done the Fox Hill Vets in my hometown of Swindon. Legendary Fox Hill. I signed on the back of there. Got a competition going. Um, already 10 numbers have gone as soon as I've started it. So get hold of me for that. Like I told you all, I've got, uh, what is it? Uh, six competitions to do coming up for Speedway, so keep an eye out for them. Uh, gonna have that Golden Hammer, Yano Pedersen signed frame picture. I've checked with him that it was a signature before I got it, and he said yes. Ivan Major signed book could be cool. Barry Briggs signed book could be cool. Chris Pughes' England coat for the touring of Australia and New Zealand would be a very cool little item as well. And that Swindon program board that someone made of my Uncle Martin was really cool. And signed by Barry Briggs, Mike Broadbank, Phil Crump, and Martin. Uh, don't forget live tomorrow 7pm UK time I'm going to be here with uh, Scottish legend himself Mr Bert Harkins uh, a lot of the newer guys as well know him from his um, Bert Harkins racing I remember my dad getting me a premier helmet with the, with the checkers on the side of it because Bert did a service um scott goggles obviously and he did premier helmets and a few other things but i even had one of them premier helmets as well that dad sorted out with her um i think it was 1995 i had a red red one i was on a honda and i got a red premier helmet with uh, checkered flags on the side of it which was cool uh so we'll be here tomorrow night 7 p.m uk time and i've got a motocross one sorted out for next uh monday 7 p.m uk time with uh, legendary Dutch motocross rider Kees van der Ven. So that'll be uh, an interesting one. Um, and then I have spoke to so many Speedway riders. Just got to nail them down now. I'm going to have to rearrange the Richard Knight one that I was going to do. Um, who have I spoke to? I've spoke to, I've been speaking to Jason Crump, trying to get him on a live, because I did a Skype with him a few years ago, but I want to get him on a live with the fans. So I'm going to get try and get Jason Crump back on. He said he would, and I spoke to him at Cardiff as well uh, in the pits. That was amazing. Um, so I'm going to get him on. I'm going to chase Amanda Castagna up again. Nicky Pedersen said he was going to give me a date in December, so hoping I can get that done this Christmas. Also, I'm going to do a cheeky Christmas special with John Davis. <laughs> I spoke to him at the Swindon reunion recently when he came up there, when Barry Briggs and my uncle and all them guys were there, Mike Keane and Brody, and that was super cool. Um, I spoke to him and, uh, yeah, going to try and sort that out as well. So that would be really cool. So, yeah, there's lots of, uh, so John Davis said he would come on. <laughs> And I'm sure that'd be fun. So I'll ask him about uh, the GP and I'll ask him about the latest in British Speedway and tracks losing, but then also some positive news on the Oxford thing, a few meetings, Birmingham going up. I'll ask him all the things and then just take cover and let him do his, <laughs> let him do his thing. Oh, you crack me up. It will, it'll be entertaining it for sure. Um, <laughs> should sell tickets for it, really. <laughs> the first two um the first two uh, lives i've done with john davis that uh i think are still one of the most viewed ones ever um yeah it was mental uh, so yeah you probably need to check in for that for the entertainment bring you popcorn and your your drinks and stuff <laughs> so i'm going to do a christmas special with john davis so look forward to that 
Um, I've been trying to chase up a contact for Dave Jessup because I really want to get Dave Jessup on. Um, so if anyone has got a contact for that, let me know. Um, because I did get hold of a chap uh, the other day uh, that said he might be able to get hold of Dave Jessup for me. He does the books. Uh, just trying to look who that was. It was Peter Lush, that's it. So hopefully Peter Lush is going to hook me up with a contact of Dave Jessup. Um, so you can might have seen up here, as it, I'll get my finger right, you can see there, look. Oh, no. <laughs> when are you doing it the other way around? <laughs> Leaf, flipping out, man. That way. There's the, can you see the logo? <laughs> Chambers Racing, you can see it all going across the bottom of there. Make sure you check out uh, Chambers Racing on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Because uh, big thanks to the man, uh, Tim Chambers, what a legend. Hooked me up uh, with my own little van. Uh, so I'm really chuffed for that. And uh, yeah, going to get some, hopefully get some uh, nice stickers on it. Uh, get some Chambers Racing ones on there and hopefully my logo here on there as well and that look cool so much appreciated to that man uh, and he's been helping me out as well so i really appreciate it what a top man uh, he puts a lot into the sport of motocross and even helps uh, on the speedway side as well which i wasn't actually aware of until i uh, met him at uh, oxford speedway and uh, he told me about that so he's even uh, helping out in the sport of speedway as well with sponsorship as well so Yes, love to get Pete and Arlene on. I have got him on Facebook. I have asked him before. Uh, there's loads, so many I want to get. Um, I spoke to Jimmy Nelson. Uh, uh, who else did I speak to? I've got to chase, it reminds me, I've got to chase him up in a minute. I'll message him, Amanda Castagna. Uh, I'm also going to do one with Phil Morris. I spoke to Phil Morris. Um, I did speak to him in the season. I did uh, meet him properly at Cardiff, which was cool. Uh, he was really nice. Um, uh, who else did I speak to? I spoke to Steve Lawson as well. I've seen him, uh, bumped into him in the pits. Uh, I'm going to do one with Steve Lawson. Um, who else have I spoke to? Just trying to look from my phone. Uh, I'm trying to get Floppy on, if anyone can help me. <laughs> uh, if anyone can force him to a, to a PC. <laughs> uh, I spoke to uh, Rhino Hughes. I, I'm still trying to talk about Speedway. Aren't you? Like I said, I spoke to Jason Crump, try and get hold of him again. I've been trying to get hold of Les Collins, uh, message Phil Collins, trying to get the Collins boys on. I'd love to get I'd love to get Neil Collins on as well. But I've messaged Les Collins. Uh, who else have I been chasing? Oh, I'm gonna I've already spoke to Calvin Tatum as well. We did a part well, we said we'd do another one. So I did one live before not Cardiff this year, but Cardiff in 2022. So it was like the end of 2022. And uh, I said, I hope you're good, Cal. When was this? 9th of November, I spoke to him. Because uh, we said that we'd do a part two. And I met him in the bar uh, and spent all the night with Nichols. And that was mental. When the, the, the Lawrence, with Lawrence uh, and the hair boys and all that. And Tony Ricardson was there. So I was obviously fanboying. <laughs> uh So I'm going to get older Calvin Tatum then. So that was reminding me now because I've just spoke to him on there. Look, and he's put, yeah, there you go. Calvin Tatum, when you're thinking, so I've got to get Mr. Tatum on because that was really cool, the first part of that. So maybe I should speak to Calvin for next week. Let's do that now while I'm thinking about it. Next week possible, Mr. Tatum. See if he's busy. Uh, Richard House saying I did uh, nearly set one up with him. Um, Tim, I've just <laughs> uh, Tim, I've just uh, seen your WhatsApp, <laughs> which has totally thrown me. <laughs> if Tim Chambers is still on, I just saw your WhatsApp, it's just totally thrown me. I want to laugh out there. <laughs> uh, who else have I been speaking to? I'm just trying to hook you guys up where I've been speaking to. Uh... Who else have I been speaking to? Because I speak to him on Facebook. On Oh, spoke to Billy Hamill as well. Because obviously you've got to check out uh, on my YouTube channel, MX and Speedway Memories. Uh, what a cool, that was what, four hours was it, Billy Hamill? Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to do the uh, the famous uh, FMX guy from America, Seth Enslow. And Billy Hamill said he's parted with him in America. And Bruce Pennell said he's uh, hung out with him as well, which is pretty cool. That was the early 90s, might be a bit old for some of you. 
Uh, yeah, I spoke to Billy Hamill, and he's going to try and get hold of uh, John Cook for me, the cowboy. So that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Love to get him on. That would be cool. So he's going to try and help me. Uh, it's all about trying to... I spoke to... Uh, who else did I speak to? Oh, I even spoke to... Um, I did speak to Ovi Funden. Uh, the other day as well, I actually was speaking to uh, Mr. Michael Lee, because uh, I showed him on my picture on the wall up. And then he said, good, isn't it? And he's got it on his wall up, even with that golden helmet there, with Michael Lee. How cool is that? So I was like, oh, look at the golden helmet. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, he's not uh, up to that. I'd love to have done one with my ankle. But uh, he's not uh, been too well. Um, but yeah, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? If I can do that. And I spoke to, like I said, I spoke to Ovi Thunder when I sorted out this uh, recent uh, competition I did on the signed uh, race jacket. And he, and he sounded like he was thinking about doing it. So fingers crossed I can get Ovi Thunder on as well. Five-time world champion. <laughs> I've just had a message off Bert. <laughs> I've got to relay this because it's hilarious. Bert's just said to me, hi, Lee, I hope you have an interpreter for me tomorrow night. <laughs> I've seen some of the ride. I've seen some of the people uh, making jokes about that. I saw um, Steve Luxton, the Cobra, <laughs> was saying, can we have an interpreter? <laughs> oh, I just said to him, I'm still on line. <laughs> Cracking me up. Uh, someone's put Martin Ashby. I'm not sure who's writing these, but uh, Pete and Arlene, I've definitely spoke to. Well, so I tried to get Bo Peterson. Oh, Phil Crump, one of my first uh, ever heroes at Swindon. Uh, one night we had it all set up. We come on in and it, it wouldn't uh, work on his phone, so it was absolute nightmare. Absolutely gutted. So I've got to chase Phil Crump back up again as well. I have done a Skype with Lee Adams that you can check on my Facebook. That was about three years ago. He got up at six o'clock in the morning. Not that I'm super geek. But uh, he got up at six o'clock in the morning for me to do a Skype with him. Uh, so basically, you want to go on my videos section of my YouTube channel. So that's what my YouTube channel looks like. So you should get on there. Still so many fans out there that don't know about it. Get on there. They're all recorded on there. I'll just quickly go through the videos that are on uh, that I did Skype ones with because I initially did Skype interviews about three years ago when I first started in COVID to entertain people. And it just went on from there, more and more contacts. It was absolutely mental. And I'm just, a, you know, just a fan. Um, so videos, if you go on the videos of Motocross and Spear members, you will see interviews with, this is obviously, I do the same with Motocross. So this is just Speedway I'm giving you guys. So this is Todd Wilkshire, Martin Slaminski. That was quite fun as well, because he went around his workshop uh, with his laptop. Uh, Martin Dugard on Skype, Chris Harris, Scott Nichols. I did a two part with him. Uh, Gary Havelock, Hans Nielsen, Lee Adams. There you go. Three years ago, look. Um, Bruce Pennell, uh, Roscoe, Jason Crump. That's the one I did with Jason Crump about three years ago. I uh, did a Skype with him. And that was when I first started the Speedway because I initially did uh, Metacross just to start with. Um, and then I went on to the live ones. Um, I'll just go quickly through the lives for you as well. These are all recorded. So you can watch them all in your own time. would love to get Steve Gresham on. I have messaged him once before, tried to get him on. He was supposed to come on for a Christmas special once. Steve Bastable, has anyone got any contacts for him? Love to get him on. <laughs> I think you need an interpreter for tomorrow evening. Just had the message off the man for that. <laughs> so live videos I've done with Speedway Riders that you can check out all recorded. Watch them all in your own time. Uh, got uh, my first live was with Andy Graham, one of my superheroes that I see a lot now. It's really cool. Uh, Ronnie Corrie, uh, Mark Laram was really cool. Look, you can just check all these. Look, you can just go and see them all. Ronnie Corrie, Mark Laram, uh, <laughs> John Davis. That was the first one. Look, as you can imagine, it was it was nuts. Paul Hurry there. Look. Uh, Simon Cross got to revisit that one because his internet wasn't very good at the time in his chateau in France. Uh, but he told me now he's got fast stuff, so we'll have to revisit that. Ollie Allen, uh, Chris Morton, Hans Nielsen. I did three hours odd with Hans Nielsen. It was mental. It was awesome. And I was so chuffed when he actually knew me when I saw him at the Oxford reopening. I was thinking, will he remember our interview? And he went, hey, Lee. And I literally like nearly died on the spot, rang up my missus, said, Hans Nielsen knows my name. 
He said, well, you should do. You did speak to him for three hours. And I was like, oh, yeah, but I, was, I didn't think he'd remember me. <laughs> so hopefully I was ugly enough for him to remember. So, But she absolutely ruined me because she went, who's Hans Nielsen? And I was like, oh, wow. Didn't feel very well after that one. Then I got Eric Gunderson. That was super cool. Look, Eric Gunderson did one with him on his own. Per Jonsson, that was cool. Amanda Castagna was on telling him off, stop swearing. <laughs> I've done two as well with Ollie Olsen. You should check them out. Uh, we did a second one because his internet wasn't great the first one. We did a Christmas special. Now, was that how long ago? It was two years ago. It was with John Davis, Neil Middleditch, Dennis Sigalos, and the Cobra. Hopefully he's been on at some point tonight. Also, I have spoke to Dennis Sigalos about doing one on his own as well. Uh, Bruce Pennell, you should check that one out, definitely. Bruce Pennell and Eric Gunderson together. That night was super cool. I did Alan Carter. Did a road racing one for Alan Carter. It was obviously brothers with Kenny Carter, so we had some good uh, fun with that one. Alf Busk, another Swindon rider, did. That was cool. Um, Lawrence Hare, mentioned him earlier. Did a nice one with Lawrence Hare. Greg Hancock, that was super cool. Did with Greg. Uh, Jeremy Doncaster and Chris Louie together. Joe Screen. Took me ages to get Joe Screen on. But got Joe Screen on in the end. Darcy Ward straight after Joe Screen. That was super cool as well. Uh, Bradley Wilson Dean enjoyed that one. Been speaking to his dad, Darren. Uh, he gave me a tour around his garage on a, on a FaceTime on here. That was really cool. Uh, Luke Becker, the American that was at Wolves and everything that everyone knows, uh, did one with PK, Peter Colson. Always speaking to Peter Colson on Snapchat. Him and uh, Mikhail Max are always sending me stuff now to do with snow and <laughs> makes me feel a bit better in the UK. <laughs> there's my second one with Ollie Olsen as well. So there's PK, look. Peter Carlson, Ollie Olsen, did another one with Ollie Olsen, then Samar Malenko, check that out with Samar Malenko, look, then Mikael Max, uh, Sean McConnell, that was fun, oh, that was uh, one that's close to your heart as well, uh, before Alan Graham had that fatal accident, uh, did a live interview with him, so obviously that's really cool to have that for his family and everything as well, Jan Anderson, the man's on there, isn't he? he's been on there tonight, look, live with Barney Kennett, <laughs> Brian Cargill up just above him. Uh, then that was the second one of John Davis. <laughs> Started manically because we were playing a, a tune and it all the live went down. It was crazy. Uh, Lance King, you should check that out. Look, Lance King, where uh, get Bruce Pennell on to surprise him. Uh, there's my first one of Calvin Tatum, look. So I think that was just over a year and a half ago. Then I did the second one with Chris Morton. Gary Avalox is uh, very good fun as well. Did him on a live. Uh, then I did Yano Pedersen, not all that long ago. Should check that out. Doug Wire, that was really cool. Uh, Nigel Cabtree. Uh, Sam Masters, I did at the start of the season. Uh, Peter Collins. Get on that, people. I got him on here. Uh, Jeremy Doncaster, that was really good. Sean Tacey. Graham Jones, hilarious about Tesco's. <laughs> so check out that as well. Bruce Pennell. That was only a few months ago, wasn't it? Bruce Pennell, um, live. That was really cool. He was down by his lake. Uh, you should check that out. Roscoe, that was really good. Everyone really enjoyed the one with Roscoe. Where's it gone? There we go. Then I did one with Martin Dugard. Then Steve Schofield. Check all them out. Uh, Marvin Cox was a really good one. Look, look how long we did. <laughs> only five hours. Mental. Hence, you need to watch it in your own time. And Neil Middleditch, check that out. Had good fun with Neil Middleditch. Uh, Rick Miller. Check that out as well. And then I did Bruce Cribb a few weeks back. Get on that. And then uh, Mike Broadbank, get on that. Check out my live with Barry Briggs as well outside the uh, Swindon Hotel. And then you've got, I did Billy Hamill literally the other week. Did a long one with him. Look, that was really cool. You should check them all out. They're all there for you to all enjoy in your own free time. Please subscribe on my YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe. Be good to get more followers on there and uh, hopefully you all had fun tonight. It was really cool with Rory. Really, really uh, very knowledgeable guy. Um, very detailed. Really interesting. I was hooked the whole night. Time flies when you're having fun and all that. Oh, thank you, Graham. Cheers, buddy. So, yeah. So keep an eye out for all my posts. Don't forget to get involved in my competitions. It would help a lot. It would be appreciated. 
and uh, it's cool some cool prizes uh, for people to win only small competitions one to 60 numbers is all i'm interested in doing so it keeps it small uh very good odds one to 60 plus if you have more than one number you've got obviously more better odds <laughs> just took a lot of calculating that <laughs> So yeah, and I've got like, like I said, I've got loads of speedway competitions going on. I might even end up doing some for stuff like this. The Adams' last signed boot at this Swindon testimony I took that off and signed it for someone that I swapped uh, motocross shirts with. Potentially do things like that because it's awesome having the memorabilia, but you know, if some other people would enjoy it, uh, enjoy them and appreciate them. Then it could be good fun, couldn't it? So much love to you all. Speak to you. Hopefully get a, a load of you guys to come on tomorrow night to see the Scottish legend himself, Mr. Barrett Harkins. We'll have fun. We'll be Scottish. And uh, damn, I'm on a diet at the moment, so I'd love some Scottish shortbread <laughs> or oaks. Not haggis, though. I'll miss that one out, uh, Mr. Harkins. <laughs> I wish I still had my Premier helmet from uh, the 90s. I would have got it out and... Uh, reminisced about that but uh, bummer so much love to you all this will be recorded i've put it out there please share my posts and stuff so that more speedway fans see it all the more the better um but yeah really cool rory schlein tonight great uh what was that pretty much three hours that was with him really enjoyable very cool make sure if you've missed it watch it in your own time really good man as well did he have some good ideas about the gp shit i'm gonna have to i'm gonna message uh Phil Morris and Mr. Amanda Castagna say, watch me, if when you get some time, watch some of the interview with Rory Schlein. <laughs> Come out with some mental ideas. Awesome. Ah, Charlesy, how's it going, buddy? I haven't spoke to you for a while. How's it going, my friend? Just about to go off then as well. Hope you're good, buddy. From Sydney. Bet the weather's a little bit better there, eh? We're down to nearly freezing tonight, I believe. Let me just quickly check that before I commit to that show. Used to love uh, Charlesy. Charlesy's. Uh, what was it? This, you had a certain amount of questions you asked him, wasn't it? On like a uh, FaceTime and stuff like that. It was fun. Who's the longest in the shower? Was who? Uh, what was it? Who boils your piss or something like that? Wasn't it? <laughs> just laughing the whole way through. <laughs> Sometimes I didn't get to bloody hear what the writer was saying. I was just laughing too much. Ooh. Oh, Charlesy, you'll love this. Fresh from the UK in Swindon, all right? See me Swindon Robin's uh, polo shirt in the background. Look at this tonight in Swindon. There we go. Look, watch. Swindon, look. It's nice and clear weather and all that. But look, tonight. Ooh. What's going on, buddy? I'll be able to compete with Peter Carlson and Mikael Max at this rate. I better get onto him on the old Snapchat. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of that and <laughs> send it. I'll say, not being funny, but it's really bad in the UK. Even though if I've seen Tony Olsen's wife on Facebook clearing about eight foot of snow off the driveway. <laughs> so it might just be a little bit bad there, but uh, this is why we do the jokes, me and PK. <laughs> it's just hilarious that I even get to even speak to these legends. But I will speak to you all soon. Much love to you all. Go and get some tea, flipping starving, even on the diet. You won't even be able to see me on here soon. I'll be like that. Bit of dye in my beard, and then I'll be like about at least take at least six months off my age. <laughs> right, I'll just leave you with me dad's quote that he always used to say to me, especially near the end of his time. Bless him. Yes, look. Ashby Levers. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Thanks, Dad. We try. We try to do this, don't we all? Much love to you all. See you all soon. Burt Harkins tomorrow night. Burt Harkins racing, Scottish super legend. 7 p.m. UK time Thursday tomorrow night. Be there or be square. See you all tomorrow. Ciao, Bella.